What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Krillin, the strongest Z fighter. Part 3. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. The androids and even Cell won't be a threat to me. I would let the others deal with them. Maybe I could do something that would turn Cell towards us as well. What if I restructured his genes after Jero's death instead of destroying him? We could have one more strong Z fighter to help us. Cell was programmed by Jero to kill Goku. That was his main mission, which he ignored due to his genes and his nature overpowering the mission. If I could reconstruct his genes with the help of Bulma, we could have a good cell albeit weaker due to the lack of some cells. I could make him train instead of absorbing people. Cell never trained, and I could guess he had quite the high potential himself, being an amalgamation of highly talented people. After we subdued the androids, I would make sure to reconstruct the current cell and add him to the Z fighters, one more strong ally would never hurt anyone. I decided to have some fun with Jaika before I entered into another closed door training. It would be quite a long time before I would get with her again, since I didn't realize how time was going by when I trained seriously. I woke up from my meditation under the high stress of gravity. If my internal clock was right it's been two years since I started training. There were just a few more months before the androids were supposed to arrive. My power level reached 125 million. As for the others, I could already feel their lower level from where I was. My ki sense also became a lot stronger along with my ki increase. Goku's power level reached 35 million, Vegeta reached 25 million, Nappa reached 27 million and Raditz 26 million, Tien and Yamcha were tied again with 10 million each, Rashi reached 11 million and Kaiwatsu reached almost 2 million, Jis and Berta reached 900,000 each almost nearing a million. Everyone took their training seriously and became way stronger than before. I guess Vegeta mastered his Super Saiyan form too by now. By my guesses unlike Raditz and Nappas he should be as strong as Goku's at 100 times multiplier. I could also feel the sacred key in me being purer than before reaching 2.5% of the whole key. I tried to use some of this pure key to enhance my attack with it. And the results were very good. I guess I could even beat people double my strength or more using the pure Buddha key alone. As the purity of my ki increased the power of my Buddha stand increased as well as I started to understand more of the mantra's secrets. Right now my Buddha stand could increase my power level up to 17.5 times now. After I scanned everyone I decided to check up on the dojos personally. I could feel that the average power level of the planet increased up to 120 and the upper echelons of humanity reached 1000 in number. My students Felix, Maximilian, and Quackity reached 3,000, 2,900, and 4,000 in that order. Quackity even started to speak more correctly even though he had a speech impediment. His feathers started to turn a deep black as well because of the properties of the space duck mantra. Gohan's power level reached 1 million and a bit, while Chikai's reached 200,000. Even Jaika became stronger reaching a power level of 20,000 from her original 1,000. Nam also reached a power level of 10,000. And Hercule's power level reached 1,500. During the time Hercule taught at the dojo, he took Videl from time to time and she met with Gohan. At first Videl wanted to fight with Gohan trying to show how her father taught her martial arts and that she could beat anyone near her age. Gohan easily beat her, however, her power level was just a tiny bit away from a hundred. I was observing from my office when the whole interaction happened. Gohan just pushed her away with a bit of key, and she fell on her butt and started crying calling for her father. She was just almost eleven years old. Gohan immediately bowed and excused himself, while Chi Chi berated him on not going easy on her. I sweat dropped at Chi Chi's words, 
It was impossible to go any easier if Gohan even blew too hard at her in his full power even dust wouldn't remain. Chi-Chi was still Chi-Chi after all. She decided to invite Hercule his daughter and his wife to dinner so she could mend her relationship with the fellow instructor. Hercule didn't want to impose, but he agreed in the end. I nodded my head towards them as Jis and Berter were in my office wearing glasses and reporting to me everything that happened in the galaxy currently after two years of my ruling. Krillin Sama, the West, East and North Galaxy had been thoroughly cleaned of the remaining soldiers that were still loyal to the Cold family. The restitution plan has been done up to 20%, and it's still going strong. The Galactic Police also decided to take in custody as helpers some of the grunts from our organization after they did a bit of screening on their past. Jis said as he fixed his glasses, he was now sporting a black suit instead of the armor since he and Berter became my secretaries they had less and less time to train since they had to compile all the data they were given from the galaxy through my communicator. After everything was settled, I decided to leave the dojo and return to the lookout. There were only two more months left before the androids were supposed to come. But suddenly, out of nowhere, I could feel some chaos stir under the lookout to a nearby island. Fires were spreading rapidly as the destruction continued down below. I immediately mentally summoned all the Z-Fighters and made them come to the island. I couldn't sense the androids since they weren't living beings, no one possibly could normally. We decided to split up and search the normal way. Suddenly we heard some intense battle sounds coming from a nearby street. Yamcha had found them. He was using his werewolf stand and Kaioken times 20 combined to battle the old man Jero. He was fighting him equally, but suddenly Jero struck him and grabbed him with his hands starting to drain his key. I quickly appeared near Jero and struck him in the face with a key encased fist making him go through a few buildings before he stopped. The fat clown android's eyes started to shine as he scanned me and said in a high-pitched robotic voice, Name, Krillin Race, Human power? His face started to scrunch up as he tried to go after Jero and escape, but Goku came out of nowhere and drop kicked him in as he transformed into his Super Saiyan form his power level wasn't as high as it was supposed to be. I guess the heart virus was starting to kick in. I immediately grabbed everyone the androids included and teleported all of us towards an empty wasteland so we wouldn't get casualties. Fortunately, no one died even though a few people were injured. Due to the increase of the average power level people could now sense danger a bit and could escape if they weren't targeted directly, which they weren't the androids only wanted to sow chaos and drag us there. Jero and the mime android gasped as they knew they couldn't do anything to us. Jero immediately bellowed towards the mime android. 19. Activate protocol 348934 hashtag. Android 19's eyes started to shine red as he didn't talk anymore. Jero was ready to make a run for it, and I let him telling everyone to not kill him, just to follow him while I would let Vegeta deal with Android 19. Goku was already panting hard as he took some of the antidotes that Trunks gave him. Unfortunately, he blacked out afterwards and fell to the ground in heap. I caught him and took him back to his house, leaving Yamcha to take care of him. I also informed Chi-Chi and Gohan that both of them could come home and look after Goku. Vegeta easily destroyed 19 now being even stronger than he was in the original series, Super Saiyan mastered and all. 19 couldn't even put up a little bit of resistance before he was overflowed with energy and exploded. He tried to absorb Vegeta's Big Bang attack, but his circuitry couldn't handle the massive influx of energy. As we followed Jero around him still unknowing as I masked everyone with my magic, he made his way towards his laboratory put in a code and entered. He immediately got towards near two giant capsules which had the numbers 17 and 18 inscribed on them. Behind him was another capsule that was inscribed 16. But he ignored that one. He immediately put in some codes as he held a remote in his hand ready to use it at the littlest wrong move made by his two creations. Out of the capsules came a dark-haired young man who wore black shirt jeans and a cowboy orange scarf. He also had a pistol holster on his right leg. As he came out of the capsule, he said in a robotic voice, Unit 17 was activated. Please tell me your instructions, Dr. Jero. Jero blinked his eyes. Was the mental reshaping done correctly? 
but he could see a glint inside Seventeenth's eyes which indicated otherwise, and he said, Stop fooling around Seventeen. I know you are faking it. Seventeen scoffed and scowled. Out of the other capsule a blonde woman who wore a jeans jacket and skirt and brown knee-high boots came out as she tried to do the same thing as her brother. But he stopped her and said, It won't work, sis. The cat's out of the bag, he knows. Eighteen pouted as she wanted to play with the doctor a bit, but oh well. I destroyed the door leading to the laboratory and all of them were exposed to me. I could say that Eighteen's beauty was my type. It was something else seeing her in person. With the distraction provided by me blowing the door up, Seventeen immediately took the remote from Jero's hands and crushed it while he decapitated the old man. Out of his body came oil instead of blood. His hat fell off his head and it showed his brain inside the glass container. He started to say, But I created you, you are what you are today because of me, you can't kill me. Unfortunately for him, Seventeen stepped on his head and crushed it, making him die in the process as blood started to splatter on the tiles of the laboratory from his brain. Seventeen and Eighteen started to analyze us with their eyes, and they narrowed their eyes. They realized we were so strong that they couldn't fight us directly. Seventeen immediately brought his hands up and said, It's okay folks we aren't really on the old doctor's side. He kidnapped us and made us come here. We bore no ill will towards you. Uh, actually we will be on our way now after we awaken our last brother here. He pointed towards Sixteenth's capsule. I just let them do as they wanted to. Sixteenth's giant figure came out of the capsule and said, Must eliminate Son Goku. Seventeen and Eighteen both started to sweat at the giant's words, and they said in unison, A brother? What if we didn't? The giant man who wore a green armor with black in between and had a red mohawk shook his head and said again, My mission is to kill Son Goku. It was time for my timely help now. I immediately interjected, I know someone who could reset his mission and let him have his free will just like you too. Eighteen and Seventeen both looked at me with narrowed eyes not knowing what I was going about, but I continued. From your words from before I realized that you were unwilling, and didn't want to become androids under Jero's hands, I can try to help you to become humans and reprogram the big guy from over there, so there won't be any problems between us. Vegeta sneered. He was still in his Super Scion form as he said, Why do we have to help these washing machines? Let's just destroy them like the fat one. I hit him over the head as five of my dots were activated my power level was almost double his bar. A 500,000 difference. He took a mouthful of dirt as he remained down there a bit. His super scion form knocked out of him. I arrived in front of the androids as I said, Excuse my friend's words. He is a bit aggressive now since he killed that other android created by Jero. Both of them nodded their heads, but Sixteenth's eyes glowed red as he plucked one hand from his wrist and a gun barrel was revealed. I decided to not let the giant destroy anything by directly interfering with his circuitry by hitting him with a high dose of electricity infused key. He short-circuited and he was knocked out. I took him on my shoulder and teleported everyone towards Capsule Corporation. There I met with Bulma and her father and I explained everything. Bulma nodded her head and said, I could eliminate this program from him and give him free will with my dad's help won't take much. Maybe a couple of days at most. I left them to do their thing and met with 17 and 18 who were waiting in the lobby. I told them the news then asked them something else. What's with those devices hidden inside your chests? They look pretty explosive. While I already knew of the bombs, I made sure they were still there by looking inside of them with my magic enhanced key sense. Both of them looked flustered as they said, Well um Jero made sure that we would be obedient, so he put two high caliber bombs in our chest that would destroy us if we disobeyed him. That remote which we destroyed was what could trigger the explosives. I nodded my head towards them and said, How would you like it to be removed? Both shook their heads and said in unison, If it's removed it will explode. I smiled at the siblings antics and said, I have a method that will make it, so they won't explode even when removed. I gathered the dragon balls and summoned Shinran at the lookout, taking both of them with me there. 
While I couldn't surely sense their power level, I could guess they were around 2 billion or so. Vegeta was already stronger than them by 500,000 and it seemed Jero gave them an energy scanner so they knew they were outmatched. In conclusion, the Android saga ended quite well. Um, what could I say kind of unsavory? But it wasn't done yet though. After I first asked Shinron if he could transform them back into humans again to make a good impression on 18. But Shinron said that it was above his power and that I should hurry up my wish. Even though it was quite some time since I last summoned him, he was still quite the grumpy dragon. I decided to just make all the androids have their bombs removed which meant 16 included. Both 17 and 18 looked like a boulder was taken away from their heart. They both sighed in relief and looked towards me with gratitude in their eyes. I asked them afterward what they would like to do. 17 answered, Well I would like to become a park ranger and maybe even marry a girl and make a family. This was my original dream before Jero took me and made me in what I am today. 18 nodded her head as well. I don't have a big dream. If I could find a man who could support me, I would be happy enough. She winked towards me. Was it this easy to take 18 as my wife? Maybe I was in luck. Inside 18's mind. God damn. He is so tall and so strong and so bald. She was blushing inside herself even though I couldn't see anything. This 18 had something for bald people. I decided to ask them something else before I took them towards their destinations with my instant transmission. What are your names? 17 and 18 said, Lapis Lazuli. I nodded my head towards them and said, Lapis, I will let you towards a nearby park and see if you can get a job there. As for you, Lazuli, what would you think if you hmm came with me? Both nodded their heads. Lazuli even blushed a bit at my words. I teleported Lapis towards a nearby park and I took Lazuli with me at my house. Coincidence made that Jaika was there as well. Jaika was, of course, half naked as she waved at us. And she said, So this can be said to be my new sister? She asked with a cheeky smile on her face. Lazuli narrowed her eyes at me and said, Who's this? I nodded my head awkwardly at Jaika and responded to Lazuli, Uh, this is Jaika, my girlfriend. Lazuli's eyes widened and looked towards me and Jaika and back and forth once again. You already have a girlfriend? You? She seemed a bit angry, it seemed even though she still liked me, it seemed she didn't like that I already had a girlfriend. As she looked around the house, she realized that I was loaded. She bit her lip but shook her head and said, I'm not sure if I'm okay with you already having a girlfriend. This is kind of awkward for me. Well, I didn't know what to say Jaika was okay with it, but Lazuli kind of wasn't. I wasn't sure what to do here but Jaika immediately came towards Lazuli and put an arm on her shoulder and said, Krillin is a great and strong guy. Let's not even talk about how he does in bed. You would experience it in time. In my culture people like him can have multiple wives who are all equal in rights. I don't mind if you would become his second girlfriend and later wife. Lazuli didn't surely know what to say. She was a bit befuddled at Jaika's words she shifted her eyes left and right. And then she looked towards my bald head and nodded. It seemed she made a decision. Wait, did she decide by my baldness? She struck up her chest forward and said, Even though I'm not okay with this, I can make a compromise. Also no touching and no shabowinking till we know each other better at least. Well, this was a pretty good outcome, right? On King Kai's planet, something that was slumbering deep inside its core suddenly woke up. A giant green-skinned man with orange hair and a bandana who wore a blue outfit and had a scar that went from the right of his forehead over the middle towards his mouth was sealed inside the core. His eyes suddenly opened as he looked around the darkness and grinned while saying, it seemed the foolish Kai isn't here anymore and the seal weakened. I can finally go out and get back with my crew. Ha ha ha. Bojack was ready to make his comeback. King Kai's planet immediately started to shake as out of it came the silhouette of Bojack. He smirked to himself and looked around the planet. Seeing only that King Kai's little friends were present he scoffed. It seemed he didn't care about them. He teleported out of the other world using a special technique of his making his way towards the East Galaxy. 
where his supposed crew was last spotted. Back on Earth, I let Lazuli and Jaika go on a shopping spree with my credit card while Bulma finished with Android 16's programmation. The giant hulking man got up from the cold steel table and looked around. He looked less angry than before, and he had a peaceful expression on his face. He looked towards me and said, Thanks to you and Bulma briefs, I can fully enjoy life now. He bowed to us and left. I could see from the glass that a bird suddenly came to him and perched itself on his shoulder. He was a good guy inside if the mission of eliminating Goku was removed. Speaking of Goku, I teleported to his house and I could see he was feeling better. Chi Chi was using a wet towel to stop his fever and Gohan was attentively watching. Yamcha left after Chi Chi and Gohan made their way back. I think it was time for Gohan to become a Super Scion as well now. I approached him and said, Gohan, as you can see your father will not be here forever to protect the planet. I can't promise I will be forever around. I need you to come with me for something. It will make you stronger. Gohan nodded his head. He was a smart kid and understood he was very talented regarding martial arts. His mother was also praising him quite a lot. His power level was almost at 2 million already. I took him to the lookout and made him stay cross-legged. I inserted some key infused with magic inside his mind and made him watch an alternative future, where Majin Buu would destroy everything and everyone that he loved. After a while, he started grunting. Some tears even were shed from his eyes and after he started shouting. And boy was his shouting loud. Mr. Popo was even annoyed as he looked at him. He was ready to slap Gohan off the lookout, but I grabbed his hand and wagged my finger at him signaling that he couldn't do that. Popo's power level already reached 2 million, a power level almost as high as Gohan's. I was impressed by his growth, but his personality still needed some work. After a while of screaming and shouting Gohan got up from his cross-legged position as his power level started to skyrocket. His hair started to spike up and turn blonde. He couldn't hold the transformation for a long time though as it drained him quite heavily. Him not being a full scion as well and how emotionally hurt he was by the illusion could be attributed to that as well. I gave him a senza bean and he got up. He looked at me with a strange look in his eyes, he seemed that he didn't know what to tell me. He just immediately transformed into his super scion form as his power level reached 100 million. He took a fighting position and I smirked. It seemed this guy wanted to spar with me. I didn't need to use any of my techniques, my power level already reached 130 million. I was stronger than him in my base. I decided to spar with him so he could get used to his super scion transformation. He immediately started with a kick towards my shins as he tried to use my height against me. The little guy was a smart fighter, unfortunately. All of my experience and high power level wouldn't let him get a win out of this spar. I jumped up letting his kick hit nothing as gravity took a hold of me, and I was staying on his leg. I punched him straightly in the face with a quick jab letting him dazed. I grabbed him and threw him out of the lookout. Mr. Popo did an internal thumbs up at my work. Gohan immediately started to levitate using his key and charged a Kamehameha towards me. I smiled and charged my own letting them clash with each other in midair. Gohan immediately started shouting as his muscles buffed and his power level spiked. Oh, that was quite interesting. It took Vegeta quite a bit of training in the hyperbolic time chamber to learn to do that and Gohan could use it form his first try. I smirked as one dot started to shine on my forehead and I pushed the Kamehameha right back at him. It engulfed him but I made sure to lower its potency and not hurt him very hard. His clothing was singed and his face was black with soot from the explosion of the key. He looked quite comical. His blonde hair turned back to black and his eyes reverted from their green color to black. He knew he couldn't get anything out of the spar so he decided to stop. I decided that I wouldn't let him leave in such a condition. I used my materialization technique in combination with some magic to clean him and change his clothes into my own personalized GI. It was a yellow and green combination of the original monk GI from the Oran Temple. It had the character of Buddha on the front and back. It looked pretty good. I decided that everyone from my dojos will wear this from now on. The Oran Temple from my childhood was never forgotten. I secretly helped them with money, 
and now they were well off, they were basically like an orphanage who taught children martial arts if they wanted to know, and they were funded by me and Capsule Corporation. Bulma liked my idea and decided to chip in with some money as well. I teleported back to my house and I could see it was a mess. It was full of shopping bags everywhere I could see Lazuli and Jaika try out some of their new clothes. Jaika was wearing skin-tight jeans and a green blouse and some blue brand sneakers. Lazuli was wearing a skin-tight blouse that accentuated her mounds. She wore leggings with a red skirt and knee-high boots. They changed from outfit to outfit, unknowing that I was observing them from the side. Suddenly I coughed and both of them gasped looking at me. It seemed women took their clothing very importantly. Lazuli immediately jumped towards me and took me in an embrace while saying, I knew you were loaded, but you were the richest man on earth. You do know how to make a girl happy, don't you? She had my credit card between her fingers as she said this. Jaika looked at us and smiled. I asked if she wanted anything else, and she responded, Nothing much. Having a lot of money is good, but all of these clothes are enough for me. Maybe I don't know let's go out on a date? Jaika interjected as well. Yeah, let's go out on a date. We never went out. All the time you are either training or helping the others save the universe or whatever. Let's have some fun. I decided to comply with the lady's will. Fortunately, dating wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. We first got to an amusement park, ate some cotton candy, etc., tried some games just like normal humans would do. It was quite a refreshing change of pace instead of meditating under a gravity machine for years on end. It was pretty fun. After we had a copious dinner at a fancy restaurant, we decided to go home. We all had quite a bit of alcohol during the dinner, but as martial artists, we could flush it effects at will. Lazuli wouldn't even get influenced by it due to her cyborg enchantments. We got home and Jaika was already pretty inviting with all the words she was saying. Lazuli wasn't sure what to do though. It seemed she wasn't ready to go to the last step. Besides holding hands, we didn't even kiss yet. It was all too fast for her. I just kidnapped her and made her my girlfriend. While she was pretty accepting of everything, she didn't know how much she could push herself during such a short period. And I couldn't blame her, it was all too sudden. I patted her on the shoulder and said, If you don't want to join us, you don't have to. She shook her head. She was still a teenager at heart. She looked in her twenties at most. I wasn't sure when Jero got her hands on her and made her who she was but I doubt she had many dates if any at all. She seemingly decided in that instant when I asked her. She looked towards me then towards Jaika and said, Please instruct me well. I smiled towards her words and invited her towards the bedroom. I got out of the bed and let the two take their needed sleep. I were back my clothes and decided it was time for me to reconstruct Cell. I teleported towards Capsule Corporation and called Bulma over. When she heard about how I found another of Dr. Jero's projects as a scientist who loved to explore the unknown, she immediately wanted to follow me. I took her to the hidden lab and entered through the secret trap door, which didn't take me long to find. She looked at the red cell inside the glass with wonder. She looked at the words inscribed on the paper beside it, and she gasped in surprise while saying, This thing has the cells of Goku Yamcha... Piccolo Tien, even your girlfriend's Jaika? It also seems it has some incomplete cells from Vegeta Raditz and Nappa as well. I rose my eyebrows, he got his hands on the Scion cells as well. Well, there were some times when I let them train on the lookout and I wasn't with them, maybe that was when the little droids took some of their DNA samples, but in fear of not being discovered, they couldn't take a lot so that's why it said incomplete. I decided to tell Bulma about my plan now, on how we should reconstruct the being's mission and personality attributes so we could add it to our team. Bulma hummed and said, It can be done, but not here teleport this to Capsule Corporation. It will take me and my father a while, but it can work. I decided to do as she said and teleported the whole laboratory to the free backyard of the briefs. I could sense Vegeta's key in Bulma's room, and also another small key that was in the thousand seams trunks was already born. And he was already quite old considering his power level. Bulma didn't interact with us much these days, it seemed this was why. I left Cell in the trusty hands of Bulma and Dr. Briefs. 
Goku was already waking up from his coma from what I could feel, and his power level increased up to 40 million due to his near-death experience from the virus. His power level increase would be welcomed, since I could feel a huge power level coming towards Earth. A spaceship suddenly struck a nearby city as some silhouettes made their way outside of it. Bojack and some people that looked like they were the same race as he appeared. Bojack gave out some orders in a loud voice. This planet is strong and full of vitality Bujin, Kogu, Zongya Baido. Clear the inhabitants so we can sell this rock to the highest bidder. Goku teleported here immediately after he felt the hostile power levels come. Vegeta, Tien, Nappa, Rashi, Yamcha flew over as well. Gohan came in tow with Goku. I decided to observe. I always fought the big fights. It was time to let the Z fighters have their own now. They needed it for their growth. And Bojack and his lackey are where what the group needed. Even though I wasn't sure who they were, I could feel their strong power levels. Goku would have some trouble against Bojack, but he could beat him in the end while the lackeys would be a good fight for the human Z fighters. Goku looked at Bojack with wary eyes, he could feel the space pirate's power, it was pretty goddamn high for billion and some. While his power level increased from the Zenkai he got from his heart virus, he wasn't sure if he could beat him without a hard fight, but he also got excited at the prospect of a hard fight, just so scion-like, the planet was in peril and he was excited, but well he knew that I could beat Bojack whenever I wanted so it wasn't a big thing for him. Vegeta looked at Bojack with the same eyes as Goku, Raditz and Nappa as well, it seemed all the Scion were itching for a fight, the human Z fighters were ready to intercept the others at a moment notice if they made the wrong move, they couldn't let them hurt the innocent humans on the planet so they could sell the planet. It seemed Bojack didn't get the news that planet trading was specifically banned nowadays. It seemed he just got his crew and searched for a nearby planet with high vitality to do his debut. So space pirate-like, and by that I mean dumb. Goku's eyes immediately started to turn feral, and his power level increased by ten times his hair started to spike and turn blonde a yellow aura started to encase him. He nodded towards the human Z fighters and his other fellow scions, indicating that he was going to take Bojack first. Vegeta grumbled and said, Kakarot, how come you were going first? Goku then said, How do you want to get this done, Vegeta? It's not enough time for a spar. What about rock, paper, scissors? The human Z fighter's sweat dropped at the two science antics. The planet was in peril, and they were going to fight for whoever was going first for a fight. They did a round of rock, paper, scissors, and Vegeta won. He put on a triumphant smirk towards Goku and transformed immediately into a super scion and launched himself towards Bojack. Bojack smirked at the prince and attacked at the same time, they met in the middle, their punches showering the planet with shockwaves. I of course cancelled the shockwaves so no civilians would be hurt. The people with higher power levels, my students could feel the power exhibited at this fight, and they were pretty startled by it. I comforted them telepathically, telling them that it would be an easy fight that won't take more than a few hours. My key sense could feel the whole planet so I knew how my students felt. As Vegeta was duking it out with Bojack, the human Z fighters were easily dispatching his cronies. Yamcha fought Baido, Tien was fighting Kogu and Gohan was fighting Zongya. Finally, Piccolo was against Bujin. The cronies' fights weren't anything. They were extremely weak compared to the collective power of the Z fighters. They couldn't put much of a fight at all and got exterminated. The main course was Bojack. Vegeta and Bojack fought back and forth. While Bojack was frowning as he saw his cronies get obliterated by the Z fighters, he didn't particularly care about their well-being, but it would be more annoying to sell the planet and exterminate its inhabitants by himself. Vegeta taking advantage of him being distracted sucker punched him in the face, and he was thrown around like a pinball. A red imprint of a fist appeared on Bojack's face as he got up from the rubble created by the impact of his back with a nearby building. Vegeta smirked at his win and started to charge a big bang attack. Bojack smirked as well as he unfurled his cloak and started to power up. His skin started to turn light green and his hair a deep red. His muscles increased as his power level increased without end. Vegeta's smirk suddenly disappeared as he let loose of his big bang attack. Bojack easily deflected it into the sky where it exploded. 
Vegeta knew he was no match for him anymore. But before he could let Goku take the fight, Bojack immediately appeared in front of him and kicked him in the balls. A sound like a strangled duck came out of Vegeta's mouth as he was thrown into some buildings, destroying them in the process. His Super Saiyan form was off as he got up from the ground debris falling off him as he said in a high-pitched voice, Why did he kick me in the balls? Why? I choose not to comment at Bojack's targeted area. Goku's aura immediately flared as his power level skyrocketed up to 300 plus times of his power. Bojack was equal with him now in his buff mode. Goku got into the turtle style stance and threw himself at Bojack at immense speeds. Bojack didn't know martial arts, he was simply a strong pirate. Goku fainted Bojack using the afterimage technique and appeared behind him, driving his knee in his back, and punched him in the back of the head afterward with a key infused fist. Dazed by the attack, Bojack couldn't stop Goku in time as a fully charged Kamehameha wave hit him from behind. Bojack was singed and bruised. He was extremely annoyed at Goku's tactics, but he smirked. He suddenly disappeared and appeared in front of Gohan. He took Gohan by the neck and was ready to snap it. Unfortunately for him, I appeared in front of him all six dots in their splendor. My base power level was already above 200 million by now combined with my full power technique as well I could defeat him easily. I hit him in an acupoint in his hand making him let go off Gohan. I healed Gohan up and took him a bit away from Bojack. Bojack's face was unsightly as he couldn't feel his hand anymore. Goku immediately said, Krillin heal his hand back up. I want to fight him without any interruptions, and thanks for saving Gohan. His face was pretty scary right now after Gohan was almost killed by Bojack. I could already feel Goku's power level bubbling up. He wasn't going Super Saiyan 2, but he got an anger boost. I decided to let go of the key I inserted in Bojack's acupoint so he could use his hand again. Bojack started to move his hand, when suddenly Goku immediately appeared above him and kicked him in the head. Well, his hand was okay now, so he was basically at full power. He grabbed Bojack by the arm and spun him around through him in some buildings and used instant transmission to appear right behind him before he could go through more. His fist rared with yellow key. He directly punched a whole trough Bojack's chest. Bojack spouted out a mouthful of blood as he grinned and tried to ram his arm trough Goku's chest as well. Fortunately, Goku kept his guard up and caught his hand just right before he could penetrate his chest. He started to overpower Bojack, and he forcefully moved his arm in such a way it broke it. Goku looked at Bojack and said, You are pretty strong, but you came to Earth with evil intentions, unfortunately. That means it's the end for you here. Goku always liked to fight with stronger and stronger people, some of the time he even tried to get them to the good side just like he converted both Vegeta and Piccolo, but for some, there was no way. Goku let go of a huge amount of ki from his hand and evaporated Bojack, transforming him into nothing but dust. He sighed as his hair and eyes reverted. He smirked towards us as I threw him a senzu bean, which he took and ate with a smile on his face. It seemed another crisis was averted for Earth. At Brief's house inside the laboratory that Cell was conceived in, the tiny cell that was in the laboratory's glass started to grow and grow. Bulma and Dr. Briefs looked on with fascination as a bug-like thing started to form. It grew from a larval state towards a more humanoid state, then fully formed as a humanoid with red skin, a strange orange face mask and elongated ears. He didn't look like the original cell at all. He broke through the glass and looked around. I already teleported over the moment I felt him. He bowed towards me and said, Master! Bulma started to explain how she ingrained the memories that I was his master, and gave him a bit of free will, erased the other missions which would put innocent people in jeopardy. He didn't wear anything, but he wasn't naked, he had a red keratin armor over his skin. It also seemed he had no private parts, of course. Like the normal cell he wasn't truly male nor female. I decided to give him the same name. From now on your name will be Cell. Bulma scoffed and said, You called him Cell because he was made from the cells of others? How unoriginal of you. 
While I felt quite lazy right now, I didn't want to think of a new name for him. Cell was good enough. Even though he wasn't the same cell, his base was the same. I could spot no tail on him. It seems Bulma removed his absorption capability. I could feel his power level being a little below 600,000. He was pretty goddamn strong considering he was just born. He also had some basic martial arts memories from the DNA. He knew a few of our techniques as well, but since the DNA was from some older times he had no stand, no Kaioken or other techniques. I decided to teach him the way to make his stand and the Kaioken and let him train on his own. I also gave him my special GI since I was practically his master. I decided to check up on my other disciples before meeting up with Lazuli and Jaika. Quackity's power level was increasing along nicely the same could be said about Felix and Maximilian. Quackity's appearance started to look more humanoid but at the same time more duck as well. He actually started to resemble Daffy Duck from Looney Tunes. Actually this gave me an idea. I asked him to come to my office in the Animal Human Dojo and told him, I have some more special work for you to do. Also, what do you think about the name Duck Dodgers? Quackity said with a no-nonsense face. Well, I don't mind some other work. Teaching these brats around here is quite boring. About the name I find it quite to my liking. It sounds pretty nice, why do you ask? I nodded my head towards him and said, From now on your name will be Duck Dodgers. I prepared a ship for you which you will use to spread my doctrine through the universe. With the brief's family help, I created some droids which can help you create dojos on every livable planet in the universe. Duck Dodgers gasped, not knowing what to say, this was a pretty important mission. But he saluted me with his arm, he now had arms and fingers everything, he was a fully humanoid duck. He said with a serious voice, I'll do my best, Master Krillin. His spaceship was just like in the show, a big blue and white spaceship. It was fully packed with robots and construction materials and books with my mantras and basic techniques. I also got him a cadet, it was a humanoid pig, he wore a purple suit and Dodgers wore a blue suit. They were special space suits made with my materialization technique, the resemblance was uncanny. Both of them saluted me and took off with the ship. With their efforts I would have dojos everywhere in the universe one day. I teleported towards my house and I could see that Lazuli was eating pickles. This was quite strange. She never told me she liked pickles. Jaika was looking at her strangely, seemingly knowing something that I didn't. Immediately, Lazuli ran over to the bathroom and vomited. It seemed something was wrong with the pickles. Then something hit me. Strange cravings. Sickness. Could she be pregnant? But I always made sure to not come inside them. But that first time, maybe I forgot? After she finished vomiting, she walked towards me and smiled. I wasn't sure what to say, and directly asked her, Are you pregnant? She nodded towards me, her smile was getting even bigger. It seemed she wanted a child. Yeah. Krillin isn't this great? I nodded my head, well what's done is done. Even though I didn't feel like having a child yet, there wasn't anything wrong with it, sometimes you had fun, and sometimes you ended up with a child. Since I was going to have a child, it was only proper we would be married as well. It wasn't hard to set a marriage date with my money, everything would be done extremely quickly. A few days later we were married. All of my friends were there. Rashi was ogling the maids that were serving food. Chi Chi was smiling towards me and Goku was waving his hand. Bulma looked around and nodded towards me. The others were happy for me as well. I wore a black groom suit and 18 was wearing her bride dress. The ceremony didn't take long, and we were officially married, but things weren't done yet. Jaika appeared as well, similarly in another bride's dress. I was getting married to two women today. The scions were scarfing down the food like there was no tomorrow at the table. I was making a toast which everyone reciprocated. The wedding was a full success. Eight months later, Marin was born. She looked just like in the anime. I wasn't sure what power level Marin had in the show, but her power level when she was born was already at 40,000. After she was fed by Lazuli, I took her in my arms as she started to laugh at me. I put a finger up, and she grabbed it with her tiny hands. Jaika got up and immediately said, I want a child as well. 
I already had a headache, whatever one more child wasn't going to kill me, Marin was pretty cute as for taking care of her while she grew up. I would hire someone to take care of her and help Lazuli. I would play with her from time to time, I still had to train for Mage and Bue, I was stronger than a normal Super Scion 2 by now. But even a Super Scion 3 couldn't do jack against Fat Bu. Before I got back to training I had some fun with Lazuli and Jaika. I made sure to not stop my sperm entering Jaika now. But to stop with Lazuli, two children were enough for me. It was time to train some more, there were quite a few years before Mage and Bu came. From now it would be 9 years, Trunks was already 3 years old. And he would enroll in the Budokai Tenkaichi at 13 years old, Goten should also be born by now. I decided to continue training in meditation under increased amounts of gravity. I let out my gold aura as I started to levitate. From now on I would train daily and sometimes come out to hang out with Marin, Lazuli and Jaika, and to not forget to be present to my other child's birth as well. I closed my eyes as I set an alarm to make sure I would wake up out of meditation. I could meditate for years on end if I got entangled in it. It has been two years since the Bojack event, my power level skyrocketed to the amount of 300 million. Everyone else got stronger as well, Marin was growing along nicely. Jaika also gave birth to a baby boy with pinkish skin and white hair. Like me had no visible nose, I decided to name him Ryu. Contrary to my thoughts from the past, it was quite fun being a father. Lazuli and Jaika also enjoyed the company of the children. Marin also liked to play around with her little brother. Marin was now almost three years old and Ryu was one year and a half. The others also trained, but their power level didn't increase as much mine. Goku barely reached 90 million. Vegeta reached 65 million and the other Scions reached a bit below 50 million. The humans reached above 10 million in power and they could combine their stands with their Kaioken. Tien even made some progress on the combination of his racial technique with his Kaioken and stand. As for me, I could use all the techniques combined bar the benevolent Buddha stand. I feel like all the techniques could be combined into one when all the key in my body transformed in sacred key. Right then there would be a qualitative change in the key. My power level was already extremely high now if I used all the techniques. I think I could even give Super Bu a run for his money now. Also my sacred key was 10% of my whole key now. My Buddha stand's power level multiplier also increased to 25 times normal. I feel when my key increased to 100%, my Buddha stand power level multiplier would increase to 250 times. As I was playing around with Ryu and Marin in my house while Jaika and Lazuli were out shopping, I could feel Goku's key approaching. He was with Gohan and another small key. It seems Goten was already as old as Ryu by now, if not six months older. I opened the door before Goku could knock, and he had his usual goofy smile on his face. I smiled towards him and nodded, Gohan was 13 or so now. His power level also reached 11 million by now. In Goku's arms was a little guy that was the spitting image of him as a young child. They were twins. I looked at him and said, Ho ho, Goku already on your second child? Goku smiled sheepishly and handed Goten to his big brother and said, Yeah, I wondered if our children could play together while we sparred. I could feel Vegeta's key coming along as well, trunks in tow, trunks should be one year older than Marin by now. Vegeta came landed and scoffed at us, he was wearing his suit from the Buu Saga. It seems he gave up on the Scion armor for now. In his arms was trunks. He was a bundle of energy as he shouted, Dad, here's where I will play with the other kids? Vegeta nodded and let him go. Goten also seemed like he wanted to go as well, even though he couldn't talk. Yet there was a glint in his eyes that suggested so. Gohan let him and go and the four of them started to play in the house. I let the trained babysitter watch over them. It was a woman who frequented my dojo so she could handle the little bundles of energy. A bit. Not by much, I instructed her if anything out of hand happened she could call me. I nodded towards them and asked, How are the others? Vegeta scoffed and said, It seems Nappa was talented in what you earthlings call being a movie producer, and he got a job in Hollywood. Goku continued after Vegeta. Raditz doesn't do much these days after he comes from the dojo, he just trains, eats, and goes back to sleep. Sometimes he goes out in the city, but I'm not sure why he is being secretive about it. Hmm, Nappa having a flair for the entertainment industries, 
and Raditz may be finding love, things happened in years while you were occupied. I asked Vegeta why he was here and he responded, I felt Kakarot come here with his sons and I knew he wanted to spar with you. I, of course, came to spar with you as well. Then he grumbled something under his breath. And that goddamn woman made me take care of Trunks as well. It seemed he wanted to put the responsibility of taking care of Trunks on someone else and fight. Well, that sounds about right. I created a stage with my materialization in my huge backyard and invited them over. Since Goku and Gohan came first, they would be the first who will get to fight. Goku stepped on the stage and entered the turtle school stance. I did the same and we both bowed towards each other. Goku immediately used the Kaioken to match my power level. I smirked as we lunged at each other. Goku immediately used the instant transmission to appear behind me and tried to kick me in the back. But I did the same thing and I used my key enhanced fist to try to hit him in the chest. He dodged using a higher burst of the Kaioken and used the after image technique to appear above me. He tried to punch me in the head, but I grabbed his fist and threw him some feet away. He almost lost his balance and I kicked him in the chin, making him fall. A key sword was put towards his neck, indicating his loss. He smirked towards me as his eyes suddenly turned feral and his hair golden. He destroyed my key sword and tried to punch me in the head. I activated my six dots and the full power technique and offset his punch with my palm. Lightning started to appear around me as a ball of key was created in my palm which I rammed in his abdomen. Goku's air was taken out of him as he gasped before he could recover I kicked him in the head and his transformation receded. This was my win like always. I healed Goku and he got off the stage it was time for Gohan now. Gohan got on the stage and directly used his Super Saiyan transformation. In the time from when he learned up till now he mastered it, I could see it by the light shading his hair had and the way he handled himself while transformed. I smirked, Gohan was way more talented than Goku but had a pacifist nature unlike the Scions. This held him back in fulfilling his true potential. It was sad but during the most intense moments, he would burst with potential which saved the day back in the original. I couldn't force Gohan to train if he didn't want to. It seemed he took more of a shining to martial arts now, though. We both bowed as I reverted some of my techniques, so I couldn't overpower him too much. He started by with a sweep kick trying to take me off my feet and offset my balance before he tried to hit me with some key blasts. Every fighter had his style, Gohan's leaned more on using the opponent's power against him. But if he was stronger than the opponent, he would just bash them like any other scion. It was a combination of his human intellect and his scion instinct. I was impressed by his style. I decided to reflect some key blasts at him and hit him with some of my own. I was still way stronger than him even though I used fewer techniques. All he could do was dodge and not take anything head on or he would lose. I smirked even though he was smart he still had to sharpen his key sense. I didn't try to hit him with all the key blasts. As he looked around he realized he was surrounded by key balls. He gasped as I put my hands together and said, Hellzone Grenade. Someplace in a wasteland on Earth Piccolo got up from his mediation as he cursed. Someone stole my technique. The key blasts hit Gohan head on. He got out of the cloud that appeared due to all the key blasts hitting him clutching his arm and panting hard. This was one of my wins as well. I healed him as well as he got down from the stage. Now it was time for the last fight for today, me versus Vegeta. Vegeta immediately shouted as his hair turned golden and his eyes green. But he didn't stop he continued to shout as his hair turned even spikier and electricity started to surround him. It seemed due to unknown reasons Vegeta was the first to achieve Super Saiyan 2. His power level skyrocketed beyond 13 billion. He still wasn't as strong as Goku concerning multipliers but he did achieve a higher form than Goku, we could say he got a win this time. I didn't need to use any other technique besides all of my six dots to fight him, so I just fought with him as I fought with Gohan albeit with Gohan I used fewer dots. Vegeta just instantly threw himself at me after he finished transforming. I took him head on he was still way weaker than me, we both fought back and forth as shockwaves appeared around us, he tried to grab me and blast me with his palm, but I pushed them aside and kicked him in the knee before punching him in the face. I charged up a spirit sword on my fingers and I tried to cut him a bit to scare him. 
He started to dodge frantically as the surrounding lightning intensified, so did his aura. I stopped using the spirit sword and appeared behind him and said, Nothing personal, Vegeta. And I kicked him in the back with all of my strength making him plummet down on the stage and almost destroying it. Spider cracks appeared on its foundation and tons of dust rose in the air. Vegeta was down there his transformation knocked out of him as he was panting for breath. I made sure to control my strength so I wouldn't knock him out unconscious. I offered myself to heal him, but he declined, he was still a bit prideful after all. Somehow the children didn't destroy the house completely when we entered to get a snack. It was a mess, yes, but nothing the maids couldn't fix in a few tens of minutes. I clapped my hands and tons of robot maids made their way inside cleaning up the mess at fast speeds. Some of the maids were finishing up the cooking as we made our way to the table. The children had their table where they were eating as well. We started to eat and the scions and half scion started to eat like it was no tomorrow. I ate at a moderate pace and before long all the food was finished. Lazuli and Jaika were coming home as well. They both greeted the scions with smiles on their faces and asked how their wives were doing. Goku responded normally, saying that Chi Chi was still working at the dojo while he continued to do his farming which he now took seriously. She couldn't be the only one who brought money home. Vegeta just said Bulma was working on some new gadget of hers. And that's all he told us. After all the food was eaten Vegeta Goku and Gohan decided to leave. Goku took Goten in his arms and Vegeta took trunks as they waved goodbye towards Marin and Ryu. I followed them out and bid them goodbye. It was time to do my monthly visit to Master Rashi as well. So I just teleported there. Like always the master was watching his show when I appeared on the island. I shouted to him so I could get his attention. Master I came to visit. He immediately coughed and turned off his TV. He came out in his signature outfit of a palm tree orange shirt and white shorts. He still had his turtle shell on his back and the same cane he always used. I smiled towards him. I never forgot to visit Rashi as he was like a grandfather figure to me. Goku also visited from time to time. Rashi smiled to me and said, Goku visited yesterday I wondered when you will turn up. I thought you forgot about little old me. I laughed and embraced him. Rashi reciprocated the embrace and asked, How's little Marin and Ryu? I responded with a smile on my face. They are growing up along nicely. Even though they do quite a mess from time to time. They are children so I let them be. Rashi looked at me with a reminiscent gaze and said, It feels like yesterday you just started your training with the weighted turtle shell. And now you are one of the strongest in the universe. Oh how time goes by. He continued afterward with a perverted smile on his face. So, do you know anything about launch? I coughed and sweat dropped. This old man's hobbies never changed. She's with Tian now old man you should take your mind off her. Rashi deflated at my response and afterwards said, Can't you find me a young woman from your disciples? Come on, do a favor for your old master. Well, I couldn't tell him no he looked at me with those pitiful eyes, so I said, If you can find one woman who decides to follow you willingly from my dojo, you can bring her home if she agrees. Rashi immediately flew at sonic speeds directly to the most nearby dojo. I sweat dropped and let him be, hopefully he won't scare too many of my disciples. Oh who am I kidding, I directly teleported to the dojo he chose and decided to investigate everything from my office. Rashi did try to court many young ladies, but most of them didn't even try to speak with him. He looked downcast as no one tried to interact with him. A light bulb suddenly appeared over his head as he motioned to me to come out of the office, and he said in a loud voice, Disciple Krillin, master from the Turtle School, came for a visit. I sweat dropped again. It seemed this old man was bent on his shameless ways. I decided to continue entertaining him as I made my way out of the office and said, Oh, master you came to visit? Rashi puffed up his chest as he used his full power technique and started flexing trying to get some attention from the ladies. Yes, I wanted to see how my brightest disciple is doing, and I can say you are doing pretty well for yourself right now. Some of the women's eyes started to shine as they realized our relationship. 
They immediately swarmed to Rashi and started to talk with him. They knew I was married, so I was off limits for them. But Rashi was my master and single. I nodded my head. This should leave the old master with his hands full for a while, and happy at the same time too. I decided to check up on Cell as well, and I was extremely surprised by his progress. His power level skyrocketed to 30 million already, and he could use the Kaioken to his maximum capability of 20 times. His stand was getting along nicely, it was quite strange, the image behind him changed from time to time, to the original base form cell to the imperfect cell and sometimes to perfect cell, till it stabilized to the base form cell under my supervision. If I guessed correctly, his stand could evolve just like mine. Right now his stand gave him an increase of five times. But as it increased I wasn't sure where it would stop. After I gave him some instructions and patted him on the shoulder, I left him to his own devices. I checked upon Duck Dodgers as well and he already created some dojos in the North Galaxy. At the rate they were going in a few tens of years the whole North Galaxy would have my dojos but it was too slow. I decided to send Felix and Maximilian in space as well. I gave them a similar ship to both and sent them. They didn't reject as they wanted to have space adventures as well, while they spread my doctrine and grew stronger by fighting different martial arts as well. I needed more disciples to be instructors on Earth though, but Earth was full of talents nowadays and I could find someone quickly. This young man was going by the nickname of Rhyme Style and his power level was quite high, almost 10,000. He was of average height and he had quite the average build as well, but he was proficient in the use of key. I took him as my disciple and taught him the whale mantra since it was the best suited for his physique. I also found some others which could be used as instructors, and I also gave some of them the right to appoint new instructors as well. Nam, Hercule, and Chi Chi already had those rights. Zack and Cody were a pair of twins which could use special attacks in tandem. Zack was quite a bit reckless while Cody was the brains. All of them could make up for the others who left. I decided to continue my training and wait for Majin Buu's arrival. If nothing untoward happened, I would remain on Earth till Majin Buu and Babidi made his appearance. Hopefully, nothing could happen now. Three years had passed since the last events. Marin was almost six years old and Ryu was four years old and a half. I started to teach them martial arts, and they immediately took a liking to it. Marin was growing at fast speeds. Her power level was already above 100,000 and Ryu, even though he didn't train as hard, had a power level of 50,000. When they trained outside me, Jaika and Lazuli had our fun in the house. My power level already increased up to 650 million. No threat in the universe was yet active which I could train and pit myself against now. Goku's power level reached 150 million, and he learned how to become a Super Saiyan 2 as well combined with his Akari mode things were going very well for him in the power category. Vegeta was on his way to master Super Saiyan 2. Raditz did his things while Nappa called me and asked, you, if it isn't my favorite bald guy Krillin, I have a job that would require someone of your talents. Someone of my talents? In the film industry. It was something new so I could give it a try. I always wondered how it would feel to be a movie star. I asked him of the details and he responded, We need a bald guy to play the main character in this movie about racing and family. We decided to call it Furious and Fast. Won't it be cool? Ha ha ha. I responded with an even tone of voice. Sure. Count me in. It would be a new experience to star in a movie. So for a few months I became an actor who did his stunts. It was pretty fun. The lines were a bit cheesy and the racing scenes pretty good if you like this type of stuff. I wasn't a big fan of it though. After all the scenes have been filmed they wanted to pay me. But I declined I was the second richest man on earth just a little behind the briefs family. Their money was no help to me. I told them they could donate it to help others who were in more need of them. I left the studio with Nappa as we ate at a nearby food stand he nodded his head at me. He was now sporting a white suit and black sunglasses. He looked professional. After we finished our food, we both bid goodbye to each other. The movie would be sold in the theaters and cinemas in a few more months after all the effects and editing would be done. I decided to go home and play with my children before going back to train when suddenly I could feel immense key coming out of the ocean. I quickly teleported towards the key, and I could see a giant yellow sponge with two gap teeth coming out of the ocean. He was shouting, 
I'm ready, I'm ready. Mr. Krabs, I will make all of these humans into Krabby Patties. On his shoulder was a red crustacean humanoid with big elongated eyes who was laughing. Iga Gaga, Spongebob me boyo, with all of this fresh meat we could sell Krabby Patties at a 300 increased price. Let's not even forget the extra vitamins from these strong humans. A blue squid humanoid scoffed and leaped off the other shoulder of the sponge creature and said in an annoyed tone of voice, I'm not paid enough for this. I couldn't let the evil sponge-like creature and his crazed crustacean boss transform the humans of Earth into patties. I charged a giant shuriken Kienzen and infused it with the wind attribute with my magic and threw it at him. The sponge immediately got cut into pieces, but he regenerated himself in an instant. What a tenacious life form. I needed to destroy him completely to make him disappear, just like the original Cell and Majin Bu. I grimaced. As the sponge was taking his steps the ground was shaking. He was immensely strong. I immediately turned my dots on and used all of my available techniques to boost myself above the giant sponge's power. The crustacean immediately shouted. We will start our first fresh crabby patty with this baldy over there. Out of nowhere the sponge took out a giant spatula and waved it towards me. I dodged it by going through its grids and hit him directly in the eyes making him lose balance and fall back in the ocean. I grabbed the humanoid crustacean and fried him thoroughly. Transforming him into a five-star meal then I threw him back in the ocean. Letting him get eaten by his people. Tons of humanoid fish started to gnaw away at the carcass of a crustacean as a loud voice shouted in a pain tone. Mr. Krabs knew. The giant sponge's height immediately reduced by a lot but his power level increased by so much I had to use my Kaioken immediately to the max level to keep up with him. Shock waves started to appear as we fought on back and forth. He was a tenacious fighter with an iron will. I could feel his grief at his boss death. So I decided to give him a fast death. But out of a nowhere a pink starfish humanoid appeared and tried to tackle me away. I dodged, and he knocked into the sponge instead. The sponge immediately said in an annoyed tone of voice, Patrick, he killed Mr. Krabs, what are you doing? The star Patrick said in a dumb type of voice, I'm sorry Spongebob, he is too fast. I wanted to tackle him and eat him. The sponge and the star were equal in power. But the star was stronger physically while also being slower and dumber. They both started to whisper to each other which I could hear when I used my magic to eavesdrop on their conversation. Patrick, I will capture him. And you spear your sharp head directly through his body. Patrick just saluted wrongly and nodded his head while his tongue was out of his mouth. SpongeBob's aura immediately started to change as a red hue appeared around it. He was sacrificing strength for speed. He immediately appeared behind me and took me into a Nelson lock. Unfortunately for him, I already knew he would do this. I disappeared from the lock just in time as Patrick spearheaded Spongebob. They were both stuck into each other now. It was time to end this. I charged my key into my hands as a giant electrified Kamehameha was shot towards them, evaporating both of them till not even dust was left behind. I looked into the ocean and I could see the squid humanoid observing from below. He looked happy at the things that happened and bowed towards me while saying, Our race will never fight again with you land dwellers. You have helped us take care of this cancers that existed in our society. After that, he disappeared underwater, maybe going to his house to drink some tea and play his clarinet. I could hear some of his thoughts seeping trough so I realized what he wanted to do. While the squid's power wasn't any lower than the others, his mental barriers were very lax. I could hear his thoughts, even if I didn't pry into his mind. After this event, I just got home and helped my children to train a bit before having some more fun with my wives. Life was good for me. It felt so good to just be lazing around and having fun, teaching my children, and just not be bothered by other things. Training every day was boring. Enjoying the other things about life was a good change of pace, which I would always welcome. But I didn't continuously indulge in these activities. I still wasn't strong enough to even touch Beerus' little toe yet. I needed to train myself until I could protect everything that I cared about on this planet. 
I could truly feel that I was a part of this universe now. As I started to ponder these wonders, my sacred key purifying speed increased during the meditation session that I just started inside my gravity chamber. It seemed that accepting myself of being in this universe now would help me understand the mantra better. I still thought if this was just a dream from time to time, my sacred key increased towards 20%, and my benevolent Buddha stand could now increase my power level up to 50 times. I nodded my head this meditation session wasn't long, but it gave me great results. My power level also increased to 700 million. Six months passed by. It's been five years and a half since Bojack and his cronies got destroyed. A telepathic message came from King Kai as he said awkwardly, You! Hey Krillin! I need your help with something. Some other demon popped up in hell now, and it needs your expertise. I wasn't sure why was he so panicked. I defeated the other demon easily. How could this other one be any stronger? King Kai continued, the thing is, this demon took control of an innocent soul and used it as the vessel for its revival. You can't kill him. You need to expunge him out of the vessel. My spirit bomb would do its job nicely here. Inwardly, King Kai was relieved as I didn't realize Bojack's attack was due to his negligence of the seal on his planet. I decided to help King Kai again. There wasn't anything interesting happening on Earth anyway. Everything was stale. The other Z fighters' training speed slowed as well. Without any threats to increase their motivation and training speed, they stopped growing as fast as before. But they were still pretty strong. Human Z fighters broke through the 50 million mark while Goku reached 250 million in his base. Vegeta reached 190 million while Nappa and Raditz took training slower and barely reached 120 million. I made my way into hell and there I saw the new demon in all its splendor. It was just like the last demon red and with horns, their appearance was eerily similar but also different at the same time. It seemed like they were of the same species. He was brandishing a scythe with his right hand as he was harvesting the life of wardens like wheat. I threw myself at him stopping him from killing any more wardens. I created my scythe of key and started to fight him. Scythe against scythe we clashed and he started to overpower me. He smirked as he drew the scythe back and a small cut appeared on my face. He licked the blood left on the scythe as the cut immediately healed but he laughed and he disappeared. Above my head appeared his scythe one glowing red eye at the top of it near the blade. I could feel him trying to destroy my insides, what kind of technique was this? I suddenly powered up with my benevolent Buddha stand. Sacred key enshrouded me as the demon started to wail inside me. He immediately left appearing outside. All the damage he did to me healed in a jiffy. His skin was burnt due to the sacred Buddha key countering him directly. He looked at me with eyes of animosity as said in a rough voice, How dare you challenge Rost? Rost? Another strange demonic name, whatever I needed to save the host. While the demon started to monologue, I gathered key inside my palm to make a mini spirit bomb that revolved extremely fast, looking like a mini tornado. I used instant transmission to appear behind him and take him by surprise while I rammed the sphere inside him. His essence started to leave the body as it entered the scythe. A shirtless human man appeared. He had his hair in a big braid and blue eyes. I healed him and he got up while saying, What a goddamn nightmare! He held his head as the pain didn't subside from his consciousness. He looked around me then down at the scythe. He gasped realizing that it wasn't a nightmare. He bowed towards me and said, Thanks for taking care of Ross, sir. He was a pretty polite guy considering he got corrupted by the scythe in the first place. I grabbed the scythe and he grimaced. It seemed he didn't want to touch that thing or see it again. Immediately the demon from inside tried to invade my consciousness but it was stopped extremely easily. Rasta? The weapon was pretty strong if you considered it in mortal ranking, but it was garbage in someone of Super Scion 2 or above standard. I destroyed Rost's true body, immediately transforming him into nothing. The man sighed and said, My name is Kane. I don't know who you are, but could you do me a favor? Could you take me to planet Ionia in the East Galaxy? I nodded my head. This guy was all alone and possessed by a demon. 
the least I could do is send him back to his home. I asked King Kai about the coordinates of the planet and after a few minutes, he telepathically transmitted them to me. I grabbed Kane by the shoulder and teleported directly to the planet. Back on his home planet seeing the familiar surroundings he bowed to me again and took his leave. He met with a masked man in an assassin suit which berated him coldly then looked towards me and cupped his fists. They both left in a shadow flicker. I decided to go back to Earth since this job was done as well. According to Jis and Birder most of the planets were fixed and a lot of the planet organization trade personnel now were either construction workers or joined the Galactic Patrol they now were all working honest jobs. Before Bu came everything would be okay for the planet or so I thought. On a distant pyramid planet with a giant tree. A purple feline yawned as he asked Wiss. Wiss, I dreamed about a bald guy who called himself Buddha. And he hit me in the head. I want to find this guy. Wiss chuckled putting a hand near his mouth and said. Lord Beerus it's just a dream. What do you know about this Buddha person anyway? Beerus scratched his head and said. Well, nothing. All I know he is bald and strong. Wiss immediately held his nose and said, Before we continue this conversation you better go and take a bath Lord Beerus. Beerus chuckled awkwardly and scratched the back of his head. A few tens of minutes later he came back in his God of Destruction outfit and shouted, Oracle fish get your butt out here. A tiny fish in a little glass started to fly quickly towards Beerus and said, Oh my lord, it isn't time to wake up yet, what's the hurry? Beerus snorted and said, I want the latest news of bald strong men of the galaxy. The tiny fish gulped and sweat dropped and said, The strongest and baldest man in the universe is this guy here. He created an image which showed my face on it. Beerus gasped as he said, This guy, this guy, I know he resembles somewhat the guy from my dream. What did this guy do? The fish continued. He eradicated the cold empire from the universe and became its new emperor. Beerus nodded his head. Frisia was a pretty strong guy. His father was also extremely strong both dying to this guy's hand is some news. Where is he currently residing? The fish just said two words. Planet Earth. At those two words, I could feel a shiver go down my spine. Back on Earth. Something big was making its way to this tiny planet. And that big thing was cat-shaped. A cat humanoid with purple skin was yawning as a bubble of ki moved at fast speeds in the void. Wiss was keeping a straight face as he used his powers to travel in the void towards Earth. Beerus immediately asked again. Wiss are we there yet? No Lord Beerus, I already told you it would take me at least half an hour before we can get to Earth. But Wiss I'm Boreed. Please bear with it Lord Beerus you can exercise after we get to Earth. Eh, but I don't want to exercise much Wiss. I'm gonna Earth to check about this bald guy. Maybe if he is not up to my standards I'll just destroy the planet and go back to sleep. I'm still tired. Beerus yawned again and scratched the back of his neck. He was quite sleepy right now. Wiss just chuckled and continued his journey towards Earth. I stood meditating in my personal gravity chamber, my power breached trough 1 billion in my base form, I could already use the combination of all my techniques with some strain, but I couldn't reach the stage of it being comparable to the Super Scion Blue transformation again, there was a lack of something that made them fuse perfectly, I couldn't put it in words exactly. I got out of the chamber and Marin and Ryu ran forward towards my embrace. I picked both of them up as they said in a childish voice. Daddy you started to train in there longer and longer? You should play with us more. I smiled towards them and said, Then let's play right now. You know when I'm not around you can ask your mothers to take you to play with Goten and Trunks you know? They both shook their little heads and said, We want to play with Daddy. I chuckled and decided to entertain the two little buggers for some time. Suddenly my danger senses went into the extremes. I could feel something so strong approaching the planet. But I couldn't sense what it was. I could feel that it was strong but I couldn't grasp how much nor its location exactly. Out of nowhere a multicolored beam of light appeared on the planet as a loud voice was heard on all the planet. 
Krillin come here if you don't want Earth to become space dust. All the Z fighters flew and teleported immediately towards the location. I grimaced and teleported there as well. I cursed inside. Why did he wake up already? Beerus, the Lord of Destruction, and with his attendant and teacher were waiting for me near the ocean surface. Beerus eyed me and said with a lazy tone of voice, Hmm? I could see how you could beat Frisia, but you are really out of colds and his other Sun League. The other Z fighters appeared continuously, Goku was second teleporting to my key signature. His power level reached 260 million. Vegeta came next, then the other two Scions, lastly the human Z fighters arrived as well. Beerus eyed all of us while Wis didn't decided to comment, he was just a spectator here. Beerus stopped observing us and pointed towards me and said, You fight me, power up to your best. I could only comply with the Lord of Destruction instructions if I didn't want everyone to get obliterated and become unrevivable as well. I concentrated as all of my six dots started to shine my power level increased by 64 times. I buffed up, and an electric red aura started to encase me as I used my Kaioken at its maximum already. Beerus started to watch with more interest as my power level increased. But then he scoffed. I see your power level is extremely high, in the mortal level you could be considered unrivaled, but you are still a long way from even touching the god level. I gritted my teeth and activated the Benevolent Buddha Stand as my power level increased by more than 35 times. With the increase of my power so did my sacred key purity. Beerus' eyes immediately started to shine when he saw the figure of the Buddha behind me and launched himself directly at me with no other warnings. I tried to fight him head on, but his power was immense. He immediately punched me and the power of the punch knocked me away directly into space. Beerus followed directly. My broken bones started to mend themselves as I started to encase my body with key. A key scythe immediately appeared in my hands as I started to hack at Beerus. He dodged easily and even grabbed the key scythe and broke it with his fingers. His strength was way too high. If I didn't enter the state when I firstly used all of the techniques together I couldn't make him exert even 15% of his power. Beerus yawned and said, if this is all you got I might as well just destroy the planet already. Inside his mind Wiss's voice however interfered. Lord Beerus, don't forget what your job is actually. This planet mortal level is extremely high and it's still increasing. You can't destroy it on a whim. As your teacher and advisor I advise you to not destroy it as it would lower this universe's mortal level. Also we didn't even try to eat any of the foods yet. Beerus transmitted his thoughts back to Wiss. I'm just bluffing with him. I want to put him in a precarious position, so he can unlock some more of his hidden potential. You can feel it too, right, Wiss? His power resembles of that fat bastards who disappeared some millions of years ago. Wiss chuckled inwardly as he observed the battle in the outer space from the Earth. Beerus was already charging his destruction ball which he threw directly at me. I knew that if I didn't stop it, it would truly destroy everything that I held dear about. I started to shout as I forcibly tried to increase the output of Sacred Key and increase my power level. Red blood veins appeared in my eyes, as other green veins started to appear all of over my body. Suddenly all the other auras disappeared and all the dots combined on my forehead to resemble something of a lotus flower. All the veins calmed down as my mind became tranquil. I took the blast head on, but I could barely stop it. I counterattacked with my own key and made it implode. The explosion took both us in its radius. After the explosion calmed down, I was back to normal exhausted and falling down to earth while Beerus was all okay and dandy. He had a glint in his eyes as he looked at me and grinned. He grabbed me by the wrist, not letting me fall down and grinned. You are an interesting guy. You have the legacy of that old Buddha guy, don't you? I just smirked at him and decided to not comment. His yellow eyes narrowed, but the grin didn't disappear from his face and he continued, Well, whatever I won't destroy your planet. It's mortal level it's too high, and it would clash with my job if I destroyed it selfishly. I also didn't get to eat anything from Earth yet. We both teleported back to Wiss. Wiss smiled back at Beerus and said, Well, Lord Beerus, 
since you are free now let's try some of the local cuisines. I decided to call Bulma for this. She should know how to fill these gluttons up. Vegeta was terrified by Beerus's presence, but he knew what to do just like in the anime. When he heard that Beerus wanted food he immediately wanted to cook it himself. Beerus narrowed his eyes at Vegeta seemingly trying to remember something about the past. But he was too lazy to continue thinking about it and just yawned and followed me towards Bulma's place. I informed Bulma beforehand of everything so she created a giant feast with different Japanese dishes. There was even pizza and pudding. Wiss and Beerus's eyes started to shine as they started to eat. Beerus ate, just like a scion as he shouted, So delicious! Wiss ate like a gentleman, but from time to time stars would appear in his eyes as he would say in a peppy tone of voice, This is so good we should come to eat here from time to time, Lord Beerus. Beerus ignored the comment as he was physically engulfing food like a black hole. He was even out eating scions at this pace. After the whole table was emptied of food, Beerus punched the table as he said, More! Bulma complied. She fed two scions every day, she had tons of food and tons of cooks as well. But even the cooks started to groan strained at the pace Beerus and Wiss ate. After all the cooks were knocked out due to exhaustion. Fortunately Beerus and Wiss were satisfied. Beerus almost looked like his brother of how stuffed he became. His eyes were droopy as it seemed he was going in hibernation. The next minute he muttered to Wiss, Wiss let's go home, I'm sleepy. Wiss complied and told Bulma, Miss, I might come here from time to time to try out new dishes. Bulma complied after she heard of how strong they were, and when she looked at my torn clothes she knew these guys weren't to be messed with. She would comply with Wiss's wishes. After they both left in a torrent of multicolored key, a sigh left out of my mouth. Everyone was tense, Goku included. Piccolo was still trembling due to the oppressive might he felt when I and Beerus fought. I clenched my hands. It was good Beerus was a glutton who didn't care much about his job. But if I were to anger him, things could have done south. I needed to master the combination of all the techniques. If I wasn't wrong, I could fight Beerus while he wasn't fully serious with it and might even come on top. I wasn't sure of the limits of Beerus' strength. It was said he started to learn Ultra Instinct, but he didn't master it. The end of the super anime left many questions to be answered. After everyone got back to train, they realized they were still weak compared to the top fishes of the universe. I had some fun with Jaika and Lazuli, played with my children, and decided it was time to enter closed door training for a much longer time. I need to at least be able to enter the supreme mode as I dubbed it by will and not accidentally. I needed to learn how to fully combine all the techniques myself and thoroughly master the mantra, so I could get my sacred key to 50% purity. After that I needed to find the latter half of the mantra to reach 100% sacred key purity. I still had lots of things to do, growing lax was a huge problem, after this closed door training I would venture in the universe and search for the next part of the mantra. I would of course warn the others of Mage and Bu before he came so they would be prepared. At the rate they grew stronger by the time Mage and Bu came Goku would be able to defeat him without getting anyone absorbed. Hopefully things would work out as everyone was way stronger than normal. I made sure to make more preparations besides leaving everything on the Z fighter's shoulders. I taught Cell the fusion dance and instructed him to teach it to the Z Fighters at an opportune time. Before I entered the long closed door training followed by leaving for the universe, I tied up all of my loose ends to make sure no one would get injured or die while I was missing. I even made sure the fish mutants from the ocean wouldn't ever attack again. I made a treaty with their king Neptune. If they ever broke it I would exterminate all of them. After finally making sure everything was done and nothing could interrupt my training, I entered the gravity chamber and started to try and fuse the techniques. It would be a long time before I came out of the chamber. I stopped my training and checked my power level. It increased towards 3 billion 500 million. I could also enter the supreme bodhisattva mode at will now. The power level increase was maxed at 125 for my benevolent Buddha stand due to me reaching the maximum capability of the mantra's first half. 
I thoroughly mastered it, so now there was nothing else I could increase my sacred key purity with. I walked outside my training room and took a deep breath, taking in the purified air from earth that was laced with key. The average power level of the earthlings increased up to two to three thousand. My students' power level breached one hundred thousand, and Goku's power level reached six hundred million in his base by now. He might have even learned Super Saiyan 3 by now. Vegeta's power level increased towards 500 million, while Nappa's and Raditz's power level remained at 350 million. It seemed they stopped training as they were concerned with other things. The human Z fighters started to catch up with the Scions, the strongest one being Tien at 310 million. Yamcha reached 280 million, while Rashi reached 300 million as well. Kaiatsu reached a power level of 100 million as well. Piccolo's power level was the most impressive, reaching 500 million, just like Vegeta's. Marin and Ryu immediately hopped towards me. They both grew now from little toddlers to young kids. Marin was 8 years old while Ryu was 7 and a half. By now Trunks should be 10 or 11, while Goten would be 9 or 10. It seemed quite a bit of time had gone by. I embraced them both and checked their key. Their power levels already reached 1 million each. It seemed Ryu was more talented than Marin. He also unlocked his dots. But his were lower than mine, he only had four. I played with them for a bit and met with Lazuli and Jika afterward. After some fun, it was time to adventure in the universe to get the latter half of the Buddha scripture. My first destination was the desert planet, where I found the first half of the scripture. But when I teleported towards the planet's coordinates and searched it, I couldn't find the statue engraved with the words again. I searched everywhere, but the statue disappeared for some reason. I scratched my head as the sunlight reflected from it. The reflection started to shine on a patch of sand on the ground. There some words were hidden which read, Only those fated can get the second half. Follow the twin universe for the latter part. Follow the twin universe for the latter part. So the next part of the scripture wasn't even in Universe 7. I had to go to Universe 6 since Wiss would come from time to time to try new food. I could use his help in this regard. I teleported back to Earth and waited. Wiss was supposed to come in the next few days to try a new dish after he ate his fill I would ask him to take me to Universe 6. Wiss came after a few days and ate some new dishes he didn't try before. His eyes were glittering as he was eating the food with his chopsticks. After he finished I approached him. He looked at me with a smile and said, What would you require of me Krillin-san? I chuckled awkwardly. This angel could see through me in an instant. After all, he was way stronger than Beerus and wiser too. I told him directly, There's something in our twin universe which I require to get to become stronger. I was wondering if you could take me there? was put a finger under his chin as if pondering my request before he nodded his head and answered. It's quite easy for me to do this, but if Lord Kampa doesn't want to let you explore his universe I won't interfere. Take this as me repaying you for all the food I ate up till now. He took his staff and told me to put a hand on his shoulder. I put a hand on his shoulder as he knocked his staff on the ground. Multicolored energy encased both of us, as we started to travel at extremely fast speeds in the universe. Wiss turned to look back at me and said, To go between universes will take me a while. At earliest one hour and most two hours. Just wait and meditate or something. Also make sure to not take your hand off my shoulder. I nodded my head at his words and just waited. Two hours wasn't much time at all. It could go by in the blink of an eye. Wiss was humming a little song as we continued to fly at an inestimable amount of speed in theoretic terms. Stars would appear and disappear in the blink of an eye. After two hours, we were finally in Universe 6. A female-looking version of Wiss appeared. Her clothes resembled Wiss's, but they were green instead of red. She chuckled and said, What's the occasion you visit my humble universe brother? Wiss smiled and said, Vados, it's been a while. Is Lord Comper awake? Vados shook her head, then took a look at me and said, Oh, what's this? This guy gives off familiar key. It's just like that fatties from some millions of years ago. 
What's up with him, Wiss? Wiss said nonchalantly. He is here for the other half of that person's inheritance. Vados nodded her head at Wiss and said, You are in luck since Lord Kampa is asleep, and I still owe Wiss a favor I can just say I saw nothing. She just disappeared afterward. Wiss gave me a blue orb and said, Break this orb when you want to leave the universe. I will come and take you back. He took his leave and disappeared in the multicolored key. I started to use my sacred key in an attempt to try and see if there was someone who could respond to the key, or if the inheritance would appear if it sensed the key by itself. I started to fly around in the galaxies of Universe 6. My golden aura encased me as I tried to find the latter half of the mantra. It took me months and I visited many planets till I got a response. It was a pulse of sacred key coming from a nearby jungle-ish planet. I immediately flew towards the planet and approached the sacred key radiance. After a few minutes I met with a man who stood upon a pole on one leg the other crossed on his knee meditating. His chest was bare which had a black tattoo on it, and he had some black training pants. His fists were both wrapped in bandages, and he was blindfolded with a red piece of cloth. His hair was tied with the same type of cloth into a very long ponytail. His mouth opened as he said in a deep and low voice, Ah, a fellow disciple welcome. He jumped down from the pole and cupped his fists at me. I mirrored his actions and asked, Fellow disciple, my name is Krillin. Are you the one who has the other half of the mantra? The fellow chuckled and said, Well met Krillin, my name is Lee Sin, and yes I do have the other part of the inheritance. You might not know as our master is truly irresponsible on how he handled his inheritance. But the inheritance was supposed to be whole, oh whatever, there are two universes which both have a lack of a Buddha position, that old fatty gave up on the position because he couldn't be in two universes at once. He continued in his deep and low voice, but with the two us the position can be fulfilled in both universes, I cannot teach you the mantra directly though, you have to go under the same test that I had to get it. Unfortunately for me I was young and rash and the test took away my sight for me, hopefully it won't damage you as it did me. I could sense Lee's power level, it was almost the same as mine. With the other part of the inheritance, he should have something similar to my benevolent Buddha stand. He didn't ask me for the other part of the inheritance. Maybe he is the reason the inheritance disappeared from the desert planet. He guided me towards a dark cave and said, Here's how things will go. You enter the cave which is a different dimension where the guardian of the cave will give you a test. Good luck. I entered the cave and darkness surrounded me immediately. I couldn't see or feel anything. Out of the darkness two voices sounded at the same time. Little lamb. Another one came, is he prey? This one was masculine, gruff and deep. Dear wolf. He came for that person's inheritance. Can't you sense the aura he exudes? This voice was feminine and calm. The gruff and masculine voice continued. Whatever. The test is your domain. I got excited about nothing. Out of the darkness, I could see the shadow of a dark wolf's head. It had a line that leaned to the right on his masked face. Out of the darkness came a masked humanoid lamb. She had the other half of the symbol on her mask. Both of these beings' eyes glowed a deep blue. Their pupilless eyes could see through my whole self. Lamb looked at me and said, the test is simple. Defeat me. She took a bow out of nowhere and knocked some white arrows on it. Wolf started to pace around seemingly wanting to take a bite out of me. But Lamb admonished him. Wolf! This is not our domain, you can't join. Wolf growled and after that remained silent. I couldn't feel any amount of key from Lamb's body. She either had godly key or didn't use key at all. I transformed directly into my supreme bodhisattva mode. All my aura adhered to my skin giving it a little golden glow and all of my dots fused creating a now visible lotus flower on my forehead. Lamb nodded her masked head at me and said, This is the first half of the inheritance, you have trained fully in it very good. She knocked an arrow and shoot it directly towards my eyes. I knew how Lee became blind now. I grabbed the arrow and redirected it back at her. She dodged easily and started shooting arrows at me like a machine gun, 
while moving quickly around like an experienced hunter trying to close in to its prey. I dodged the arrows I couldn't grab and tried to get close to her. She chuckled under her mask and continued to run around. She was extremely fast, and her arrows were deadly, but if I could get near her I could defeat her easily. It seemed she was a long-range fighter. Making use of her not knowing my abilities fully, I used the afterimage technique to get nearer to her and charged a death beam on my finger. She leaned her head to the left and dodged the beam. She knocked another arrow on her bow and shot it directly to my forehead. I created a key barrier to stop the arrow which was too fast to intercept but it pierced trough. It was ready to pierce directly through the middle of the lotus flower on my head. But I shouted and a beam of key discharged from the lotus flower directly, obliterating the arrow. I used instant transmission to directly appear behind her and I drove a key sword directly through her abdomen. She started laughing and said, Good job. You are way better than the last fellow who got here and got blinded on his first attempt. She dispersed into white mist and appeared near Wolf. She took an ancient-looking tome from Wolf's mouth. Wolf grumbled and said, If we didn't lose to that old fatty and his bet we wouldn't have to appear here every time someone enters. We are not guard dogs. Lamb nodded her head and said, A bet is a bet. Now Wolf let's go our job is done. Two mantras were imparted as per the old guy's instructions our debt is finally finished. Wolf's tongue got out of his mouth as he howled and said, Finally no more interruptions in the hunt. They both disappeared in clouds of mist one white and one black. I opened the ancient book as Buddhist characters appeared and entered my forehead. The lotus flower started to transform into a dragon tattoo with a crystal in the place where its eyes were supposed to be. My skin started to turn golden as my sacred key purity increased to 51% but stopped suddenly. The transformation reverted to its normal looks and the power increased just by a bit due to the 1% purity increase. I got ejected out of the cave and met with Lee outside, his skin was golden and his tattoos were glowing, his blindfold was off and his two eyes glowed golden he smiled towards me and said, while you were in there I got the hang of the first part, the combination is what Master liked to call his Buddha God mode. You can call it whatever you want, though. His power level was off the charts as he suddenly charged towards me. I transformed back up again and started to fight him. During the fight my transformation from before started to flicker in appearance as we clashed. But it never appeared completely. Our power levels were equal, he didn't have something similar to my benevolent Buddha stand. He only now unlocked the technique from comprehending the first part of the mantra. His key purity was the same as mine at 51%. The transformation came from the second part of the mantra. He learned it first so he got to it faster than me. After a while of fighting back and forth we disengaged and reverted. He smiled to me. Both his eyes were scarred as he put his blindfold back on. It seemed his regain of vision was temporary. He laughed and said, it took you some time to finish the test. It was way faster than me though. Three months and half. Pretty good record. By now Mage and Bu should have come to Earth, right? I cupped my fist towards Lee and took my leave. I got back to where Wis left me and destroyed the blue orb he left me. After a while, the multicolored key appeared and we both disappeared again with it. Wis looked at me and said, Congratulations. Krill and San a bit more training and you will truly reach the realm of the gods. I nodded to him and said, Thank you, Wissan. He put a hand to his mouth as he laughed and continued. Anyways, I can tell you that I felt some kind of strange power appear on Earth. If I'm not mistaken, it should be that ancient guy, Majin Bu. He is even a bit older than Lord Beerus. Fortunately, with the powerhouses you have on Earth, he can be easily defeated. It seemed Mage and Bu appeared on Earth but wasn't unsealed yet. That was good. I could watch from the sidelines and interfere if anything happened. After another two hours and a half I got back to Earth just in time. I could feel lots of auras gather on Papaya Island. It was time for another Budokai Tenkechi tournament. Inside a hidden place on Earth and shrouded by a magic barrier was a little guy with wrinkled yellow skin who was talking with a guy with an elongated head who wore armor and had an M tattooed on his forehead. 
Pui Pui, those two humans should bring enough energy for Majin Buu's resurrection. Supapavich and Yamu, was it? Anyways, afterward, kill them both. Heard me, Dabura? Out of the darkness, a devil with red skin horns and elongated ears appeared. He also had an M tattooed on his forehead. He wore a light blue suit which covers his entire body, minus his muscle-bound chest, along with a white spiked cape, a white circular belt, and white boots. He bowed towards the little yellow guy and said, Of course, Master Babidi, after we made use of the trash, we will dispose of it. Babidi started to laugh sinisterly. Back to Papaya Island, everyone started to gather around me as I let my key out so they can find me. I was already on my way to keeping the key in my body to reach its true divine potential. Keeping it inside and not leaking it at all helped me purify it at the same time. Goku immediately appeared, his power level was already at 750 million, he smiled towards me and put a hand on my shoulder. Behind him was Gohan who was now as tall as Goku, and he changed his haircut, it was now spiked up a little bit like when he transformed into a super scion. Goten was behind Goku clutching the hems of his pants, looking at me with wariness. From behind me came Lazuli, Jika, Ryu and Marin Goten started to brighten up seeing his two playmates. I hugged both Jika and Lazuli. It has been quite some time since I left them for Universe 6. After this whole thing was done, some special activities were needed. They both started to blush at my gaze. They realized what my eyes indicated. Goku scratched his head and asked, Are you too sick? Why are you too so red in the face? Both of them returned to normal at Goku's words. Old Goku never changed up till now. Even though he was a bit smarter, he was still clueless regarding other things. Yamcha, Tien, Vegeta, and the others also made their way over. Trunks was with them as well. Even Hercule and Videl made their way over. Videl waved in Gohan and grabbed his arm when she got over to him. Gohan scratched his head awkwardly and smiled. The kids would join the newly made junior division, while the adults would join the adult division. Me, Lazuli, and Jika wouldn't join since there was no reason to. The junior division's most exciting fights would be Trunks, Goten's, Ryu's, and Marin's. Since the junior division would fight first, I decided to ignore the other kids' fight and just focus on the main events. Trunks won all of his fights easily. The same could be said about Goten, Marin, and Ryu. They were overshadowing every kid in the tournament. Finally, after 30 fights, it was the time for Goten and Trunks to fight. Marin and Ryu were also fighting in an adjacent stage. The winner of those fights would get to fight in the finals. The Goten and Trunks fight was just like in canon, both going super after warming up. As for Ryu versus Marin, Ryu immediately activated his dots. For dots shining on his forehead, his power level increased by 16 times. He immediately struck forward to Marin, but she dodged easily as a red aura started to encase her. She was using the Kaioken at the maximum of her capability. Ryu smiled towards his sister and started to use his Kaioken as well. Marin didn't unlock the dots, so she couldn't keep up with her brother even though her base power level was higher and she was older. Marin's face started to scrunch up as a tall, well-built man appeared behind her. Its skin was purple and had small bits of gold around its body it has long, flowing hair with a darker shade above its eyes and on the bridge of its nose, blurring the distinction between its hair and head. The spaces under its eyes and on its cheeks and chin are a darker color and divided clearly from the space around its nose and mouth. It wears a cap on its chin and a metallic headband in three pieces, the central piece of which is shaped as a vertical ellipse. Her stand was pretty imposing. I didn't know what it represented though, Maybe that was the quality of her soul? A loud voice immediately came out of the stand's mouth as it started to punch towards Ryu at high speeds. O-R-A, 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 O-R-A. The barrage of punches was only after images at the high speed it attacked. Ryu chuckled and said, Oh, whose sister you are approaching me instead of running away? Marin smirked and said, I can't beat your butt without approaching you. Ryu then stopped chuckling and said in a serious tone of voice, Then come as close as you like. A similarly muscular figure appeared behind Ryu. 
it wears a headpiece covering its face to below the place of its nose, slanting at a steep angle from the base of its forehead to a peak situated above the rear of its head by about half its height, leaving the face of an inverted triangle visible to the front. It wears small, simple twin diving cylinders on its back. The stand immediately started to below as it started its rush attack. Muda, 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 muda. They both started clashing as Ryu started to overpower Marin. It seemed his stand was superior. He was ready to punch a hole through her when he stopped and said with a smile on his face, You lost sister. Marin just sighed, cupped her fists and left the stage. Ryu waved at me with a huge smile on his face. He was proud that he beat his older sister. It was expected he would when Marin started to change with time and became less and less interested in martial arts, but Ryu just continued to train, he liked it, but I'm not sure, as he grew older would he still like it? It was time for a fight between Ryu and Trunks. The fight was similar to the anime, but Trunks won in the end. Of course, Trunks was older and trained by Vegeta who was pretty much a slave trainer. If Bulma wouldn't stop him, he would run Trunks to the ground like a sergeant from hell. Ryu and Trunks both cupped their fists at each other as Trunks immediately transformed in his Super Saiyan state. Ryu used his dots and the Kaioken to rival him in power, and they started to clash. Trunks had the upper hand in experience as he was older and trained every day by Vegeta, but Ryu had his special stand. The yellow man appeared behind Ryu as suddenly time seemed to stop for a few seconds. I could shrug off the effect so could the stronger Z fighters. But Trunks couldn't. This was similar to Hit's time skip ability. I studied the stand's ability for future references. Maybe I could learn to skip time from this. Trunks was hit four times in the chest and two times in the stomach in the stop time. Ryu immediately said afterward, Time has started again. Trunks got blown over by the punches and skidded over the stage early getting blown out. He coughed a bit of saliva but stopped himself near the edge and threw himself at Ryu. Ryu put his stand in front of him both arms crossed in an X to take the attack Heaton. Trunks punched through the stand and hit Ryu in the head, taking him out. Unfortunately, Trunks was still stronger in the end. I couldn't train Ryu every day as Vegeta did to Trunks. Trunks fed Ryu a senzu bean, and he got up. They both left the stage. It was time for the adults' division. The first fight was Yamcha versus Tien, in which they fought at a pretty equal pace. But in the end, Tien won due to his racial technique which increased his power level. Piccolo fought a strange guy who I knew was Supreme Kai, but I decided to not comment on it. Piccolo gave up after Supreme Kai explained to him some things. Vidal fought Supapovich and Yamu the two Babidi drones, but now they both got there but kicked so hard they couldn't do jack. Vidal trained with Gohan every day at the dojo, so her power level reached above 200,000. Both of them were above 50,000, they couldn't do anything to her. Gohan fought Vidal afterward and won. Supapovich and Yamu still lingered around even though they were defeated. They looked for an opportunity to drain someone of their energy. Goku vs Vegeta was the next fight and this one would be the most interesting. Goku smirked towards Vegeta while Vegeta scoffed at Goku and said, Kakarot it's time for us to settle our debt. I have achieved another transformation and it's time for me to beat you. Goku smiled at Vegeta and said, Oh, Vegeta you ascended as well? Vegeta immediately grew grim from Goku's words. It seemed he learned Super Saiyan 3 as well. He ignored him afterward and started to power up. Blonde hair. Blonde hair spiked up and electricity around him. Goku did the same. Vegeta immediately started to scream as his power level increased at enormous amounts. The whole planet started to shake as his hair grew long like Raditz and his eyebrows were gone. Goku immediately started to do the same. Both ascended to the Super Saiyan 3 state and launched at each other. They knew the form took a lot of energy so they had a very short time delay to fight. They punched each other in the face as they smirked. Their power levels were pretty equal at the moment. Goku couldn't fuse Ikari mode with Super Saiyan 2 yet. Let's not even talk about 3. So their power levels didn't have a huge difference between them. They were both geniuses at fighting so they didn't back down from each other at all. A kick which was matched there. A punch which collided with another making shockwaves appear in the air. 
I, of course, stopped the shockwaves before they could hurt anyone. As the fight continued, Yamu and Supapovich eyed the two of them in fear, but as their power levels started to go down due to the extreme expense of the Super Scion 3 transformation, the duo's eyes started to shine. They both reverted to their normal form exhausted. Vegeta fell on his butt while Goku still stood tall. It seemed Goku still won by a little here. Immediately while their guard was down Yamu and Supapovich used a gourd to absorb their energy and run away. They had some special magic cast on them so they couldn't be sensed. I could, of course, follow them but I decided not to. Majin Buu had to be restored and brought to the good side. He would make a good ally. He was just a misguided fat blob of gum. He wasn't evil, he was just so innocent he didn't realize his actions hurt other people. Vegeta cursed under his breath as he was out of energy, and Goku looked serious. I threw two Senzu beans to them which were now in abundance. They both ate them and got up. Supreme Kai Shin showed himself and started to explain about Majin Buu and Babidi. I made my way down and when Shin sensed my power he gasped and said, Our fellow god. Did you sense Majin Buu's arrival as well, wait you? This key is foreign and familiar at the same time. It seemed he could recognize the key but didn't know where it was from. While I couldn't blame him the other Kais couldn't teach him Jack since they were absorbed by Buu. The poor guy didn't even know what his earrings were for. He cleared his throat as Kibito was analyzing me from the side and continued. Okay I can sense where these two are going. It should be the best if we stopped Bu from getting out with this fellow. Um, God here we could do it easy peasy. I'm not sure about his position, but his hidden power is immense from what can I sense. The Supreme Kai had good senses if he could feel my Supreme Bodhisattva mode. I knew where Babidi was hiding, so I just decided to teleport everyone there instead of making Shin become our guide. We were welcomed with the sight of Babidi killing Yamu and Supapovich by exploding both of them, while he took the gourd thing filled with the remnants of Vegeta's and Goku's energy. Babidi immediately screamed, Dabura come and take care of these intruders while I unseal Bu with this. The energy is enough, but it would take a bit of time. Dabura smirked and came forward, he was a pretty strong guy, but Gohan would be able to beat him very easily. As on cue, Gohan came forward already in his Super Saiyan state ready to fight. Dabura smirked as the M tattoo on his forehead started to shine red. I narrowed my eyes so this was the correct way to use the key storage magic. Dabura shouted as he started to spit at Gohan trying to transform him into a stone statue. Gohan dodged the spit and appeared in front of Dabura punching him directly in the gut. Dabura smiled evilly and embraced Gohan. He was ready to splatter him full of spit. Gohan disgusted, immediately powered up to a Super Saiyan 2 as well, and obliterated him into nothing. In the other world, King Yema was muttering about his mahogany table and how much he wanted to see his children when Dabura appeared in front of him Halo and everything. Yema narrowed his eyes and said, You go to heaven. Hell is too good for you. Dabura was then caught by some chains from above trying to drag him upwards. There were angels singing and light of good omen, but Dabura was trying his best to escape clawing at the white chains with everything he got, but he still got dragged into heaven. Back on earth we entered Babidi's building and tried to find him, it was like a maze but I easily solved it, along the way killing Pui Pui and some green giant monster who ate light. Majin Buu was already starting to hatch from a giant pink egg. Babidi rubbed his hands as he waited. We entered at the same time Bu got out of his shell. Just like in the anime, he was a big guy with pink skin who wore a purple cape. White pants had some holes in his head and protrusions which looked like a small tail. He had his eyes closed and an ever-present smile on his face. His power level was high, but Super Saiyan 3 Goku could still beat him if he didn't have a time limit. At the same time in Hell, a demon with headphones was walking around the machinery which was purifying sin. He tripped and hit the machinery with his horn which poked a small hole in it. He seemed flustered as the sin started to engulf him transforming him into a giant blob of yellow he started to shout in a childish voice. Janemba Janemba. King Kai immediately got alerted and contacted me. Krillin there's a new demon emergence in hell. Need your help SAP. 
Well, peace was good for some time, but I have work to do again now. I hope there won't be any problems with Majin Buu while I had to go and deal with Janemba. Supreme Kai Shin narrowed his eyes and nodded at me. It seemed he got the message as well. I teleported to hell, and there I saw my next opponent and the machine that was getting empty. It started to engulf Janemba as his power level increased. But he remained the same. Shouldn't be too hard to beat this guy. The yellow fat blob with holes in around his chest and stomach area was jumping up and down at me and continuously said, Janemba Janemba. He was just like a Pokemon who could only say his name. I could feel the sin starting to strengthen him and his power level was still increasing at fast speeds. I couldn't use any fatal technique on him though. Just like with Ross, the sin took an innocent as a host to manifest itself in a demonic form. I'm not sure why it took this form, however, the best way to purify the sin and not hurt the demon inside would be to use the spirit bomb. I started to gather energy in my palm but Janemba didn't want that. He jumped towards me with his giant fat body trying to tackle me down. I had to use the afterimage technique to flash around while I kept one hand up to gather the energy. I mixed it with some of my sacred key and it started to take a rainbow quality. Janemba attacked me again but I clenched my hand with the mini spirit bomb inside making it even smaller. I used instant transmission to appear directly near him and drove my sacred key infused spirit bomb directly into his stomach. He immediately started to cry as steam started to blow out of his holes. He spits out a demon with headphones and punk clothes. I grabbed the demon and teleported him a safe distance away with some other warden demons. Before he could thank me, I teleported back to Janemba. It seemed things weren't done yet. The fat yellow blob started to shrink and became human-sized. He gained a yellow eye scara, upper armor color being dull purple and his skin tone and tail are bright red. He also gains two dull purple curved horns on his head while gaining dull purple wristlets, pelvic armor, and ankle supports. He immediately started to shout something which I couldn't understand and he grabbed a purple handle out of air. This was spatial manipulation. The sword was long and the base of it was red while the handle was a deep purple. He started to laugh at me showing his long canines. He started to flicker out of existence like a lagging Windows XP folder. It was just like a glitched game. I couldn't sense him anymore. He appeared in front of me ready to drive his sword through my chest. I dodged it instinctively and shot a key blast towards his face. He immediately used his spatial powers again to disappear. I waited patiently trying to guess where else he would come from and made a plan on how to counter his ability. Back on Earth Fat Bu looked at Babidi like a child would look at a toy. Babidi immediately tried to use his mind control magic. Unknowingly to him it did not affect. Babidi started to talk. Bu attack these guys. Bu replied with a childish voice. Are they strong? Babidi looked flustered at the question. Shouldn't his mind control give him complete control of Bu? What changed? He didn't know that the mind control he prided himself in got his father killed and that's why Bu was sealed in the first place. Well that and the Supreme Kai's sacrifice. Boo's smile immediately widened as he looked at the Z fighters and said, You guys play with Bu okay? If you aren't great at playing, you become candy. The human Z fighters immediately used all of their techniques, while the Scions turned Super Scion 2 directly. Bu said, In a miny miny mo, I choose you. He pointed towards Gohan and launched himself directly to him. Vegeta Goku and the others tried to interfere but Bu pushed them back with his gummy body and steam started to get out of his head. Not fair not fair. You all fight Bu by ganging on Bu. Not fair. He started to flicker as he multiplied. His power level very little reduced and started to laugh. Better now better now Bu can play better. Cell was watching from the distance eyeing the pink creature with weariness. His power level in base now was 1 billion and he fully mastered the Kaioken and his stand to perfection. Behind him appeared the original Cell Perfect form. His power level increased by 50 times. He was ready to swoop in and save the human Z fighters if anything happened. I ordered him to. Goku and Vegeta clashed with the clones but they were overpowered. 
Gohan couldn't do much if even Goku and Vegeta were getting there but beaten. The human Z fighters were at an even higher disadvantage. Bu was getting bored. He immediately pointed the protrusion from his head at Yamcha and said, You boring, become candy now bye bye. Yamcha growled as he fused the stand with his body. Fur started to appear on him as he transformed into a werewolf. He dodged the candy beam and charged a spirit ball towards Bu. Bu just ate the spirit ball and said, Not sweet enough. He punted Yamcha in the face with an enlarged fist and knocked him out. Other Bu clones fought with the other's human Z fighters. While the Bu clone was fooling around about his victory, Cell appeared out of nowhere and driven a fully charged special beam cannon trough his chest. He took Yamcha from the ground and flashed away. Bu was angry as more steam was going out of the holes of his head and he started to screech. You guys not fun? Bu angry and hungry. Seeing he couldn't defeat them in the short run, he pointed his head appendage at Babidi. Babidi started to sweat drop as he said with a shaky voice, Uh, Bu what are you doing? I'm your master you can't. Bu just said, Bu hungry. And he transformed Babidi into a ginger man and ate him. Bu patted his belly and recalled all his clones. He looked annoyed and he said with a no so cheery voice anymore, Bu bored with you if you not stronger Bu makes you all candy now. All of the remaining fighters grimaced. Cell knew that if things came to worst he should help them escape and teach them the fusion dance so they can win. Goku and Vegeta grinned as they started to shout, both transforming in a Super Saiyan 3 at the same time. Bu looked curiously at the both of them nodding his head as he felt their power. They both charged at him at the same time and Goku hit him in the face and Vegeta in the stomach. Afterward, Goku flashed above Bu and grabbed him by his appendage and threw him upwards into the sky. Vegeta was already charging his final flash and shot it at Bu when he was thrown upwards. Bu became pieces of gum that started to rain from the sky. Goku and Vegeta reverted to their normal forms inside. A laugh could be heard from every individual piece of gum as they stuck back together. Ha 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 you guys fun. Bu can play with you guys a lot. Kaiatsu took two sens of beans from his hat and threw them at Goku and Vegeta. Goku and Vegeta looked at each other with serious eyes. They knew they couldn't destroy Bu thoroughly at their level. They needed to master Super Saiyan 3 for that to happen. They could delay him and fight to a standstill even blow him up. But they could not blow every piece of him up. They both ate the sens of beans, and they didn't know what to do. Suddenly Cell appeared near them and told everyone, Guys follow me. I have a way to defeat him. Unfortunately, we have to let him free for some time. Bu looked at Cell with wonder in his eyes, not being sure what he was, and asked, Bu wants to play with you too? Can you play? Cell responded to Bu. I can get you a stronger partner to play with, but you have to wait. Can you do that? Bu put a hand under his chin and thought hard, and responded after a few seconds, Is he stronger than these two? He pointed towards Goku and Vegeta. Cell nodded his head and responded to his question, Way stronger! Bu smiled again, very wide his teeth were showing. Bu can wait, but Bu needs to eat too. If you guys don't give Bu food, Bu can get himself. He was ready to fly away and make people into candy. Gohan immediately stopped him by appearing in front of him and said, We have plenty of food and a place where you can wait. Please don't go. Bu nodded his head at Gohan and said, Well, Bu will follow if you have good food. Gohan's back was drenched with sweat. He knew he was no match for the pink blob. He needed everyone to make food for Bu so things would work well. Cell took Bu to the lookout with everyone else, while Gohan invited his mother, Videl, and Hercule to help with the food. They also had Bulma get some cooks and potty sri so they can make Bu food and sweets. Both Hercule and Videl were good at cooking due to them working at their restaurant for most of their life. Of course, Hercule quitted in the other half to follow his dream as a martial artist, but Videl still helped from time to time. And Gohan thought her food was heavenly. Hercule and Videl flew at high speeds towards the lookout. Hercule had a tiny dog in his hand which Videl was observing. And she said, Dad, what's with the dog? Don't we have to feed that mage in Bu? The dog looked pretty bad his left hind leg was injured. Hercule answered his daughter with an awkward laugh. 
Well, I saw this little guy and I couldn't abandon him. Master's friends have these green beans which can heal you fast I wanted one, so the dog could get healed. Videl looked at her father and nodded her head. Hercule was a good guy, even if his appearance didn't show it. They both arrived at the lookout and Majin Bu was playing around when he saw the dog and Hercule and said, A doggy? Funny hair man, can Bu play with doggy? Hercule looked around, but Cell was teaching the Z fighters the fusion dance, so they didn't have time to entertain Bu. Hercule thought that the guy didn't look that evil, so he gave him the dog. The dog started to lick Bu's face. As Bu observed the dog he saw that it's injured, and he said, You feel bad? Bu makes you feel better. He healed the dog with his key and the dog immediately started to run around and bark. Bu started to follow him and play around. Hercule afterward immediately started to cook with the help of Videl. Bu started to salivate at the aromas that were assaulting his nostrils. Bu immediately sat down with the puppy in his lap and waited for the food. Cammy was watching from inside the lookout and sighed to himself. Piccolo was with him and asked Cammy, What's up old man? Why are you sighing? Cammy responded, This guy Majin Bu, he is innocent, but there's a deep evil hidden inside of him. We don't have to kill him. I can feel that he also has some bits of sacred key hidden in him. Maybe there's something hidden about him? Piccolo looked at Cammy with a questioning gaze and asked, Old man, how would you even separate the evil from him? It's impossible unless he does it himself as you did. Cammy nodded his head and said, Maybe we could convince him with food. It looks like he enjoys it a lot from what I see. And enjoying it he was, he was engulfing food like a tornado not stopping at all. Whenever a plate with food was shown it would be engulfed by his mouth, plate included. Hercule the cooks and Videl sweat dropped. Popo was looking at Majin Bu from a corner with a glint in his eyes and muttered to himself, Such a pure evil inside this guy. I could use it. Then he shook his head and sighed. Too bad that noseless freak exists. I can't do anything to him. What a freaking maggot. Vegeta was red in the face. He was trying to learn the fusion dance, but he didn't like the idea of fusing with Kakarot or anyone else. He wanted to go into the chamber and try to master Super Saiyan 3. Goku was of the same idea as Vegeta, but Mr. Popo barred them the entrance for some reason. While they trained back in hell, I was fighting Janemba with all I got. From time to time I would hit an empty space just to hit Janemba in his face. I started to guess where Janemba would come out of space. It was just like how Goku guessed where Hit would try to attack him during the time he skipped. It was, of course, way easier than what Goku did. It didn't take me much time to start to be able to hit him more and more. Janemba started to screech hysterically as he put a finger forward and drew it in the air, making shards of key that looked like needles fly at me. I mimicked his technique and the shards collided in midair destroying each other. This fight had gone long enough I learned quite a few things from Janemba, and by observing his space manipulation I learned how to do it as well. For now, it was time for the personification of sin to be purified. I turned on my supreme bodhisattva mode as the dots on my forehead morphed into a dragon with crystals where its eyes are supposed to be. The dragon's crystal eyes started to shine as my power increased to the realm of gods. At 52% key purity, I'm pretty sure I hit levels of power comparable to Super Saiyan God Goku or even a bit higher than him. This amount of power couldn't be counted in numbers anymore. Janemba screeched and tried to run away using his space manipulation. Unfortunately for him, it was too late. I appeared near him before he could truly dissipate into space and threw a right hook infused with sacred key towards his disappearing stomach. It transformed into dust then into purified sin which flew back into the machine. The machine started to roar to life as I thoroughly destroyed Janemba and all the sin purified itself. I closed the hole into the machine with my magic key and materialization. The pipes of the machine were going directly upwards into the yellow clouds, and even higher into heaven. Inside heaven we could observe Dabura, but he was different now he looked like a pious and pure follower. He was walking along a big patch of flowers and smelling them. Nearby there were the pipes of the machine that was purifying sins in hell. Out of the pipes, the form of Janemba appeared, but he was different, 
He took an even more humanoid form and his skin was a normal white instead. The only thing that would link him to the old Janemba was his headpiece and the sword he held in his hand. He bowed towards Dabura and said in a clear voice, Ah Dabura, it seems you have gone to heaven as well? Dabura nodded and continued to smell the flowers and enjoy life in heaven. He looked like hell didn't exist for him anymore. I teleported back to earth and felt all the powers on the lookout so I teleported back there. Shin was also there watching as the others trained in the fusion technique. He was expectant of how they would defeat Mage and Bu. He immediately got a message from King Kai nodded towards me and said, It seems you did your job perfectly back in hell. I'm not sure what god position you got, but keep doing what you do. I sweat dropped at the Supreme Kai's lack of knowledge, poor thing. I must unseal the Elder Kai so he could teach this youngster some things. After Bu ate tons of food, he patted his belly and burped. He looked at the Z fighters as they did a strange dance and said, Bu can wait for even more for the strong fighter. Actually, Bu will just take a nap here. He started to sleep like a rock, a snot bubble coming out of his nose. Everyone sweat dropped this guy. Cell and the others were hard at work to master the fusion dance while I was contacted by King Kai. Good work on the hell job, my disciple. And from what I heard from Supreme Kai Shinsama, you unlocked your god key already. He started to sniffle and said how his disciple already grew so fast. He ignored the threat of Mage and Bu, seemingly trusting in me to save everyone. After a few days of training, they all perfected the fusion dance and were ready to fight. Majin Bu woke up as the snot bubble burst and he yawned. Vegeta and Goku immediately started to dance. They did it perfectly as their power levels were lowered at the same amount they touched their fingers and a white flash appeared. I always wondered what the fusion of Vegeta and Goku would look with the fusion dance. Vegeta was cool, but what would come out of the fusion dance instead of the Patera? I was answered by the sound of their fused voice. Yosha, Majin Buu, Gogeta is here. Be ready to get your butt kicked. They immediately powered up to their Super Scion form and took a combination of Goku's and Vegeta's stance. Majin Buu smiled at Gogeta as he felt the combined power of Goku and Vegeta. He started to power up himself as steam started to come out of holes on his head. He immediately started to change from his fat self as he became buff. His power level started to rival Gogeta's, but that was only Gogeta's in his base form. Bu started to laugh and said, All that food made Bu stronger. Let's play. They both launched at each other and started the fight. After Gogeta and Bu clashed in midair, they dashed backwards due to the impact. Bu was at a disadvantage and flew away farther than Gogeta. Even though he was strong, he wasn't on the level of Super Saiyan Gogeta. Gogeta smirked and started to charge a Big Bang Kamehameha. He put two hands forward and a ball of blue key appeared above his outstretched hands. He charged it as it started to revolve, and it shot at Bu at high speeds. Bu shouted as a beam of key appeared out of his mouth and clashed midair with Gogeta's beam. Gogeta smirked as he shouted, and his power level increased. His beam started to push back Boo's till it engulfed him thoroughly, Blobs of pink reconstructed themselves back into the buff Bu. Another bout of anger came out of Bu as he shouted, You know fun, Bu likes to win. Hot steam started to come out of his head holes. I observed him making sure if evil Bu came out right now I would send him on his way. Kami interrupted my thoughts by talking with me telepathically. Krillin, this is a good situation to remove the evil side of Mage and Bu. Hit him with some of your sacred key right now. I could see that he was right. Boo's guard was down as he powered up. I charged a revolving ball of sacred key into my hand and threw it at his stomach. It hit directly as he started to cry. Boo doesn't feel right. He started to become a mishmash of things as a black gray piece of gum was ejected out of him. His power level reverted to normal and his buff form was removed, making him go back to his fat form. The black gray piece took a different form than the normal Bu. He was skinny and had the same outfit but in different colors. He grinned evilly at Fat Bu and was ready to launch himself at him and absorb him. I appeared in front of Evil Bu and kicked him in the chin launching him away. Gogeta didn't know what to do. 
but suddenly Gogeta defused and both Goku and Vegeta looked awkwardly at each other. The normal time of the fusion dance was 30 minutes, but it went down the more energy was expended. Super Saiyan 1 made it 10 minutes, 2 would give the Saiyans 5 minutes and Super Saiyan 3 would give them a maximum of 3 minutes. Of course, Potera wouldn't have this weakness as it was a permanent fusion. They could still diffuse with the help of the Dragon Balls though. The evil Bu narrowed his eyes at me warily looking at me as I encased myself fully in Sacred Key. There was no need to keep this Bu alive. Suddenly the mantras in my head started to ring, and they said in an old but jolly voice, This can be your first work in Universe 7 My Disciple. The mantras transformed into different words which entered my consciousness directly. It was a technique to reincarnate an evil person by purifying their sin and sending them in the reincarnation cycle directly. The old voice continued, I have high expectations of you that Lee Sin is a bit hotter headed. It would take more time for him to mature, but for you at most 10 years would be enough to reach the peak that even I couldn't get to. I immediately started to use the technique that was imparted to me by the voice, I started by doing some strange hand seals at which Bu immediately tried to run away from seeing them. He felt great danger from the hand seals. His senses were very good, unfortunately for him. I activated my supreme Bodhis of Atom mode and slammed my hands that were in the final hand seal directly on his forehead. He started to shout and cry in agony as foul-smelling smoke came out of him. It was dark and gave the feeling of hatred and destruction. After a while no smoke came out of him anymore and he had a serene look on his face. He seemed enlightened as he started to disintegrate on the spot. He bowed to me as his whole being turned to dust. He was on his way to get reincarnated. The old and jolly voice continued after everything was done. It was way weaker than before it seemed this was its last message. Your job in the universe is to keep the balance between the gods. The Lord of Destruction should only destroy planets with no future while the Supreme Kais should make a habitable planet and race every 100 years, they can't interfere in mortal affairs unless it's an emergency which could destroy the universe. He continued in a low tone of voice. You are the guardian who balances yin and yang in the universe. You will also have to reincarnate evil souls with high potential. We can't let them stay forever in hell or heaven. The residents of heaven deserve their rest. But if they want to be reincarnated, they can appeal to you. However, the residents of hell need to be tortured till all their sin is expunged before you use the technique I taught you on them to reincarnate them. Depending on the sin, it can take even up to 100,000 years. After all of the information was transmitted, a weak sigh resounded in my consciousness, and he said his last words, I'm impressed with you. Even though you aren't from this universe originally, you did a good job. At first you were selfish and uncaring, but you grew a lot. Continue doing what you were doing, farewell. The voice disappeared and won't be heard of again. Back on the lookout, Vegeta Goku and the Z fighters were eyeing Bu playing with the puppy that Hercule brought. It seemed his violent tendencies were completely gone. The puppy licked Bu's face as he laughed. Kami walked from the lookout's building and said in a loud voice so everyone could hear him, with the help of Krillin and his special key Majin Buu has been cleaned off his evil side. It's similar on how me and Piccolo were. Unlike me and Piccolo however the death of his evil side didn't affect him at all. Even though he is still as strong as before he is pretty harmless now. And he can be taught to differentiate right from wrong. Hercule looked at Buu and how he bonded with the puppy and said, This big guy seems to like our food. I'd like to take him with me and teach him. Everyone looked at each other unsure of what to say. It's true Hercule was pretty strong but still extremely weak compared to the Z fighters. Even Kayatsu could transform him into a meat patty by blowing at him. Bu looked towards Hercule nodded his head and said, Bu likes you? What's your name funny hair man? Hercule puffed up his chest and said, My name's Hercule and if you come with me, and you don't harm anyone else anymore unless they are evil. You can eat food like this whenever you want. Well, those words would put a big dent in his finances. I observed from nearby and decided to finance the food consumption of the Hercule household from now on. They weren't wealthy enough to be able to feed Mage and Bu. Unlike in the original where Hercule was a martial arts legend now, he was just a humble instructor at my dojo. I didn't shortchange my employees. 
The pay was pretty good, but it sure as hell wasn't enough to comply with Boo's eating habits. I came back to their view, smiled, and nodded my head towards Cammy and everyone else indicating that it wasn't a bad idea to let Hercule take care of Bu. It was like destiny tied these two. Bu looked towards me and his tiny eyes opened up and narrowed before closing them back up his facial expression with his narrowed eyes wasn't that happy. But it returned to normal, and he came towards me patted me on the shoulder and said in his normal voice, While Bu is happy that part of him is gone, Bu and unhappy that his power is lower, it seemed Bu cared about his power. This wasn't the same Bu as the original since this one had fewer interactions with Hercule. It seemed that I gained a rival. Goku smiled while Vegeta scoffed and left. There was nothing for him here anymore. The earth was safe so he didn't care anymore. Goku looked as Vegeta left and put two fingers on his forehead and waved at us. It seemed he was gonna leave as well. Everyone started to leave from the lookout to go back to their training and activities. I left as well and met with Jaika and Lazuli. Only Kami and Piccolo were left on the lookout. Popo was nowhere in sight. Kami sighed and said in an aged voice, Things become harder and harder for this old body if there was someone else who could take over the Earth's guardian post sigh. Piccolo started to think about something. He narrowed his eyes as Nail's voice started to echo in his head. You can always find a young Namekian who wants to leave. I recommend Den the young man who is Guru's new guardian. I think he should be done with that old man already. Piccolo looked at Kami and told him about Nail's thoughts. But before he could finish, Kami put a hand on Piccolo's shoulders, and he became a blue aura which encased Piccolo. Piccolo clenched his fists as he shouted out loud, What power! I'm great! I feel it! I can do it! Both Kami and Nail started to snicker in his head. Piccolo forgot about the two people in his consciousness and started to blush. Popo appeared out of nowhere and looked around, not spotting Kami at all. He looked at Piccolo with narrowed eyes and threw him off the lookout. It seemed Popo's power level increased by a lot if he could throw away the super-duper Namekian Piccolo now. His power level was a bit higher even than the Super Scion 3's Popo snorted and said, Now that no one is on the lookout anymore, I can call all the bitches here. Popo got a phone out of nowhere and said, Bitches, it's Big Daddy Popo here, we changing headquarters. Popo changed from his genie look into a purple suit and glasses and a fedora. He used his incredibly fast flying carpet to take scantily clad women from around the world and left them at the lookout. When he got everyone on the lookout, he said out in a loud voice, Okay, bitches, here's the thing. My home is free now for some time and I can increase the profit I make from your asses by using my carpet to fly you to your destination. You will now be milked like cows? Any disagreements? All of the women intoned in a chorus voice. No great daddy Popo. Popo smiled showing his one tooth and said, Great. He picked up his ringing phone and took a blue-haired, scantily clothed young lady and said, Marin, you go to customer 6359. Marin saluted and left. Till Dend made his way to the lookout, strange things would happen on it. Things that children shouldn't hear or see. After Piccolo got off the high of his power level, he remembered that there were no Dragon Balls anymore. It had been quite a few days, so he decided to come to me and tell me about everything. I nodded my head at him. I wasn't sure when Piccolo and Kami would fuse, but it seemed it happened. Whatever I could just get Dend from Namek, right? I teleported to Namek and I could hear Super Kami Guru. You want Tio leave too? You took the oath. Dend looked at Guru with what seemed anger and said, This is the last drop Super Kami Guru. I have done many things I'm ashamed of under your tyrannical rule. I'm leaving. Dend looked forward and saw me. He immediately ran over and said to me, Let's get the hell out of here. Super Kami Guru seemed like he wanted to get off his chair. I didn't linger around to watch the monstrosity get out and teleported back to Earth. The lookout was full of unwashed panties and cigarette butts. I looked around and thought of what the hell happened here. Popo came faster than lighting, and before I could blink my eyes, everything was spotlessly clean. He coughed a bit in his fist and said, So this is the new Earth's guardian? 
I will teach him the required skills. Come after me. I left Dend with Popo, hopefully. Dend won't be scarred for life. But I could hear them laughing in chorus behind me and saying that they would make a great team. I also heard something about modifying the dragon and making it be able to grant two wishes. I sighed and left the two to their own devices. Both Ryu and Marin jumped in my embrace the moment I teleported back. I chuckled and played with them a bit, then left towards the training room. My sacred key was already at 53% purity, just 47% left and I would master the mantra. I then could be able to truly take on the title and responsibilities of the Buddha position in Universe 7. There weren't many things left to do, Beerus wasn't going to become a problem as he liked our food too much to destroy Earth, and after I mastered my sacred key fully, I could try to reincarnate the cold family and make them good. So there won't be any resurrection F. The only big problems that were still existing would be Zamasu and the Tournament of Power. I got up from my position of being cross-legged, scratched my head and yawned. Training in high gravity started to lose its efficiency. If I increased the gravity by too much it would take an effect on the environment so I couldn't increase it by too much on Earth or even in the universe. I might create a black hole and damage the universe, I'm not sure how Zeno or the Grand Priest would like that. It was time to unseal the Elder Kai. I let him stay in his sword for a bit more than he should have. I teleported to the Kai's world. Shin and Kibito were surprised at me knowing the coordinates of the world, but remembered how I had God Key as well and said, As a fellow deity, I welcome you in our humble realm Krillin. Would you mind telling us what's your position? Though your key is familiar, I remember feeling it from somewhere, but I'm not sure where from. Kibito didn't interfere in our chat as he wasn't a Kai but an attendant. Even though his position was higher than the normal Kais, he couldn't interfere in other deities' talks. I nodded towards Shin and answered him, I'm supposed to balance your work with the gods of destructions. I should make sure he does his job well while you create planets at least once every few hundred years. Shin started to sweat drop and said, Oh well, you see about that. Since Majin Buu absorbed the other Kais who were more experienced and knew how to create planets, there was no one left to teach me anything. I don't actually know how to create planets thus I can't do my job as a Kai. I sighed as I already knew of this already. I changed the topic and asked him, I heard something about a sword that should be around here. Would you mind showing me it? Shin immediately started to smile, feeling awkward at his lack of knowledge. By my words he realized that I would have to punish him if he continued doing nothing. He started to walk towards the Z-Sword's location and said, Follow me I can show you the location of the Z-Sword. While I and Kibito aren't able to get it from the stone it's lodged in, you can give it a try. With your immense power you should be able to drag it out of there. I nodded at Shin and followed him towards the location of the sword. It was up a giant hill a few kilometers away from the initial location where I teleported to. Kibito was following us from behind with a stern look on his face. I flew up the hill directly to the top and easily dragged the sword out of the hill. Both Shin's and Kibito's jaws dropped to the floor seeing how easily I took the sword out. For them, it seemed like it wasn't sealed there at all. Of course. I was already in my supreme bodhisattva mode. The dragon's crystal eyes were sparkling as I flicked a finger on the blade of the sword. It immediately broke in two. They couldn't even their jaws back from the floor when they saw how I destroyed their precious Z-sword with only a flick of the finger. Out of the sword's remains an old Kai with a similar skin color and clothing to Shin appeared. He was wrinkled and wore pataras on his ears like Shin. He also had a small mustache and had an unkempt clump of hair on his head. He started to cough and looked around spotting me, and the shin he immediately got down the hill and said, You goddamn failure! I was sealed in this sword for tens of thousands of years and none of the other kais could help me get out. All generations got worse from mine, and now they were absorbed by Majin Buu too, letting only a newbie like you, Sai I guess I have to teach you the basics and everything else. The old Kai looked towards me bowed and said, I was good friends with the previous holder of your deity position. I can see that you still have some potential that has to be unleashed. I can help you with that as a reward from breaking me out of that goddamn sword. 
Shin looked at the old Kai with an awkward expression not knowing what to say. He could identify the Kai as one of his own kin. His ki had the same quality even though it was lower than his. He bowed towards the old Kai and said in a serious tone of voice, I will follow the teacher's instructions. Kibito looked from nearby and bowed as well. He was just an attendant so he would follow whatever instruction the old Kai had for him as well. Old Kai nodded his head and smiled. His smile showed that he lacked tooths in certain spots of his mouth. I knew he looked like this because he fused with a witch, so I declined to comment on his appearance. The other two unknowingly blurted out, Uh, it seems you are really old, teacher slash Supreme Kai. The old Kai immediately started to flare up and shouted at both of them. I look like this because I was tricked into fusing with an old witch. I didn't look like this originally. Kibito and Shin looked at each other and asked simultaneously, How did you fuse unwillingly? Old Kai shook his head and said with an exasperated voice, Those guys didn't even teach you the basics, eh? He pointed towards the pot era earrings of Shin and said, you can fuse with the earrings, the power level increase is extremely high, but there's a disadvantage you won't be able to diffuse back again. Shin nodded his head, absorbing the information. I coughed and stopped the old Kai's teaching session. He looked towards me and said, Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Come over here and wait. I can unlock your potential right now. I came down from the hill and approached the elder Kai. He immediately started to do a weird dance as he circled me. I waited and waited and waited some more. After a few weeks of dancing, I could see the old Kai panting his tongue stuck out of his mouth as he said in an exhausted ton of voice and fell down. I can't bring out all of your potential. This is the most I could get out. Shin and Kibito helped the old Kai up. While I clenched my fist as I observed my internal situation with my key sense. My base power level was already a little higher than Gogeta's which was already stronger than Goku in his Super Saiyan 3. I started to power up as the whole sacred world of the Kais started to shake. Old Kai immediately shouted back, Stop or you will destroy the whole world. I swiftly stopped, deciding to keep my key in check and not externalize it. After the activation of my Supreme Bodhisattva mode, the purity of my ki directly increased to 70%. My eyes glowed as I could feel that my power was getting to unexplainable heights. I still couldn't defeat Beerus, but I was about 35% there. As for Whis and the others, not being a battle maniac like Goku, I only needed to be stronger than Beerus to keep him in check and properly do my job as the new Buddha of the Universe 7. I breathed out as I reverted my transformation, Old Kai got up from the ground and said, Well I did everything I could for you regarding the unleash of your potential. To thoroughly master that guy's technique you have to get to his sacred land. I'm not entirely sure of its coordinates though. There you could train and master his technique fully. I waved at the Kais as I left their planet after I left the old Kai looked at Shin and said, Okay, now it's time for you to learn everything I know so I can enjoy my retirement. Shin sweat dropped Kais can retire? I was back on earth as if on cue my children immediately sprang up in my embrace. Both Jaika and Lazuli were waiting for me too they got up from the table they were waiting at and said to me, Krillin it's been some time since we had some family activities, we decided today it's time for some, we let the children pick where they wanted to go. Both of my children looked at me with happy smiles on their faces, they weren't that small anymore. As Marin was eleven and Ryu was nine and a half now, I smiled back at them and said to everyone, Of course, where would you like to go? Both children smiled at each other and said at the same time, Let's visit some other planets. I decided to entertain them since the children were in my arms. I motioned for Lazuli and Jaika to grab my shoulders. I could use instant transmission without putting my fingers on my forehead by now. Combined with my mastery of the spatial elements I learned from fighting Janemba it was easy peasy to teleport wherever I wanted to. I decided to teleport to a random civilization and I appeared into a futuristic city. Tons of people with red skin looked at me with wide eyes as they started to whisper to each other. Out of a nearby big building came out. Wait I knew this guy it was Mutart. I teleported to the planet which I saved from that slug guy. 
Mutart immediately approached me and said in a loud voice, Our Savior came back to visit. Everyone immediately bowed to me. I used my key to bring everyone up. Mutart was actually almost kneeling to me. Lazuli, Marin, and Ryu looked at me with a questioning gaze. Jika gasped, then said, So this is the planet you saved from back then? I chuckled and asked her, You still remember about that? She nodded her head and smiled at me. Mutart immediately invited us inside the building with fervor. He clapped his hands and tens of servants put up a feast extremely quickly. Mutart bowed again and said, For our savior and his family only the best. Lazuli and Jika giggled, while the children immediately got to the food and started to eat. The servants helped Jika and Lazuli with their chairs. They did the same thing for me and Tart as well. The children didn't care as they ate the colored food and said simultaneously that the food was extremely good. I ate some of the food myself and I could say they improved the food by quite a lot since last time. Of course, last time the feast was from the remains of the food they scavenged. By now their crops and livestock should have all been replenished. I looked around but I didn't spot Musarka at all. Mutart started the conversation after the meal. You remember my daughter Sarka? She married a nearby kingdom's prince. And now she is even expecting a child. I nodded my head it was normal for things to happen like this, it was just sex. I wasn't emotionally invested in her at all so I didn't really care what happened to her. In Tart's eyes could be seen disappointment. After the feast we toured the planet and it wasn't very different from Earth besides the different cultures. Food and the skin color they were pretty much like humans. We bid our farewell towards Tart and teleported back to Earth. We all enjoyed the mini holiday on the planet which I now knew was called Rio Atoa Porit. I let the children go to play while I had some extra special fun with Jika and Lazuli. Unknowingly, time flew by. There was just one more year before Beerus woke up, and I still didn't purify my key to 100%. I just couldn't find the sacred place where I could finish my training. Maybe it wasn't in Universe 7? I didn't fully explore Universe 6, I needed to go back. First things first I had to go and meet with Wiss so he can take me to Universe 6. It would be easy since I almost had a god position now and he still ate food regularly from Earth, there was no reason for him to refuse me. It took a while, but Wiss came back to Earth after a few months of waiting. He was like always pumped up to eat some new type of food. I decided to wait for him to finish his meal before I approached him again. He eyed me and said, Your progress is quite good Krillin-san. You are almost ready to take on your god position. Unfortunately, you still haven't reached 100% of your key purity. I smiled at Wiss, he could see through me fairly easily, it was obvious how above me he was in power. Maybe if I got Ultra Instinct I might be able to tangle with him, but I'm not sure if I could win. I looked at him and said, could you do me another favor with San? I'm not strong enough to do my work well enough currently. I need to go to Universe 6 to search for the place where the previous Buddha trained. Was put a hand to his mouth. Laughed then took his staff in his hands. He motioned for me to put a hand on his shoulder so we could leave already. It seemed Wiss would like to see someone put Beerus in his place. I guess he didn't like when Beerus was stepping out of line and doing things that he wasn't supposed to do. Just like before in two hours or so we got to Universe 6, we met again with Vados. But unlike before a fat version of Beerus was groggily cleaning his eyes near Vados. Vados chuckled while the fat Beerus said, Angel of Universe 7, what are you doing with this guy here? Hmm. Wait a little. This guy he has the old man's inheritance. He shook his head after his sleepiness wore off and he continued, Whatever I don't want to let him in the universe. What are you going to do about it? You can't act towards me. Ha 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 ha. I frowned at the fatty's words. I needed to get to the sacred land to complete my training. If he didn't let me and I needed to force my way through. Kampa was the brother of Beerus. There weren't any official comments on who was stronger, but I think Kampa was a tad weaker than Beerus. Vados looked at Kampa and chuckled. Kampa immediately whipped his head back to her and shouted, what are you laughing at Vados? Vados smiled at Kampa and said, Kampa-sama, it seemed you got fatter again. Kampa growled as his pudgy cheeks inflated up. 
I'm not fatter. I coughed and interrupted their argument, which looked like it would go on for a while. I stopped in front of Kampa and said, What do you want to let me travel in Universe 6? Kampa put a finger under his fat chin and started to think hard. He also started to sweat intensely. It seemed thinking was an exercise for this fatty god of destruction. After a few minutes of no response, Wiz threw me the same type of orb he gave me last time and left, not wanting to wait after Kampa's slow thinking process. After tens of minutes, Kampa finally thought up on what he wanted and said, I want some good food from your universe. I sweat dropped while Vado said with an annoyed tone of voice, It took you 20 minutes to think up of this Kampasama. Did your fat start to get to your brain? I held in my laughter at Vados's comment, but Kampa wasn't going to have any of her snarky comments. I stopped the argument again, and I decided to just give him some ramen. There was no earth in Universe 6, so he never tasted such a type of food before. After I satisfied the God of Destruction culinary needs, I decided it was time to search for the blessed land left behind by the previous Buddha. I decided to first meet up with Lee Sin and ask if he knew its whereabouts. But the planet where I met him was deserted. No other living being was there anymore. What was left was just the training poles Lee used. I flew up and I could see that the training poles were arranged in such a way they left a hidden message for me that said, Look for the remains of Earth. In its vicinity use your sacred key, and you will find the blessed Buddha kingdom. We will meet there again. I flew up from the planet and tried to find the remains of Earth from what I saw in Dragon Ball Super. Planet Earth was destroyed in Universe 6, so I had to find its remains. I flew around randomly not knowing where to start. I decided to start with a nearby dead planet, but since the message said remains that meant all that remained of Earth were pieces of ground and rock. I couldn't search the whole Universe 6 for some dead pieces of ground. I immediately used my Supreme Bodhisattva mode at its full power and flew at extremely high speeds around the Universe trying to get the signal from the Blessed Buddha Kingdom. I didn't care if any other deity found about me. Kampa already knew while the Supreme Kais won't interfere with my search. I suddenly got a response from some ruins in the south part of Universe 6. There I unleashed my sacred key fully as a giant golden door appeared in the void. It was inscribed with Buddhist chants in Sanskrit. I could read it due to the mantra. It said, Live like a Buddha. Keep balance in the twin universes. You found your way so you are worthy. The door opened and absorbed me in. I got up from the ground and all I could see was an endless forest. Everything was back to its cleanest state. The sky was blue and the key concentration in the air was immense. I could feel the air purify my body and key at the same time. Out of the trees appeared Lee. His blindfold was off and his eyes were recovered. He smiled towards me and said, Fellow disciple Krillin we meet again, the master left something for you. I already got what was supposed to be mine and I'm on my way already. Farewell. He opened the golden door that absorbed me in and left Trophet. No indications, nothing. He just left me alone trying to find my way through this place. Well, what a good fellow disciple he is. I started to navigate the sea of trees trying to find what was supposed to be mine. At the same time, I circulated my key with the help of the mantra, and I could see that my key was getting purified and it wasn't stuck anymore. Maybe I needed to reach 100% key purity before the remaining treasures would reveal themselves to me. I sat cross-legged in the air as I levitated using my key. Golden aura encased my body as I turned the gravity field around me on. The gravity was so high even the reinforced ground of the Buddha kingdom was cracking. But it was repairing itself at high speed as well. I started to circulate my key as its purity started to increase at fast speeds. 72%, 76, 81, 99, Finally 100. My benevolent Buddha stand appeared behind me as it fused with my body. My power level increased by 250 times permanently as the stand fused with my body and ki. The only transformation I had remaining was the supreme bodhisattva mode. I woke up, and I could feel that all my aura was internalized. I wasn't sure how much time I meditated but the gravity which was pushing me when I started to meditate under it was useless again for me. 
I got down to the ground as I sensed my internal condition. My sacred key purity finally reached 100% as it crystallized. My body changed too, it wasn't like it was before, it had a different feeling which I couldn't truly explain. In front of me appeared a tiny wooden boat and a bead. A voice appeared in my mind which explained the use of the two items. The bead was the Sarira left from the previous Buddha and by using it I could come back to the Buddha kingdom whenever I wanted to. I was currently on the training grounds of the kingdom, so I didn't see all of its benefits. As for the wood boat, it was a special boat that could travel through the boundary of the universes faster than any angel or god could. Well, besides the Grand Priest and Zeno, I took the miniature items and put them in my clothes pocket. They were bound to me and only Zeno could take them away or destroy them. The God of Destruction couldn't use their special destruction key to destroy them or me anymore. I was fully bequeathed the title of Buddha now that I reached 100% key purity. I decided to travel to the middle of the Buddha kingdom before I left. It wasn't anything impressive in visuals. It reminded me of the Oran Temple, but more grand and imposing. Buddha statues were lined before the temple and sticks of incense were burning at the entrance. Nothing too interesting, I decided to light a stick of incense myself. But when I lit the stick of incense, something interesting happened. I could feel that my key was moving faster and better than before. Of course, the change was negligible for me as I was already in the realm of gods. Right now, I would give myself a 50% to 65% chance to beat Beerus. But others could use this incense to hasten their training speed. I tried to take the incense with me and it worked. There were no restrictions. The thing was there were not many sticks of incense left. So I had to use them smartly. I teleported out of the kingdom and used the boat which enlarged at fast speeds to get to the border of the universe immediately. I decided to break the orb and call Wis I wanted to surprise him with the boat. Wis came over after a while and gasped when he saw my boat. Oh who it seemed you got the rest of the old man's things. Good job Krillin. I see you don't need my help anymore. Why did you call me? Well I did it so you won't have to worry over me. Also I wanted to see how fast is the boat compared to you. Wis chuckled and said. A race is it? I smiled towards Wis and said. If you want it to be. Wiss immediately left in a bunch of rainbow key while my boat started to travel at immense speeds. I was neck and neck with him. I used some of my sacred key to power the boat, and it easily took over the first position. I arrived in Universe 7 first. Wiss smiled at me, then left towards the Gods of Destruction realm. I got back to Earth, and from what I could see my journey to the Buddha Kingdom took me almost one year and a half. This included the training. I met with my children and my wives. Ryu and Marin were growing along nicely from little kids into budding teens. Jaika and Lazuli were as beautiful as ever as I embraced them. After I played with the children and had some fun with my wives, I decided to invite everyone to the lookout. The human Z fighters and the Scions made their way over to the lookout in basically seconds after hearing my voice telepathically. Everyone was way stronger than before. I smiled at them and lit the stick of incense that I got from the kingdom. As they took in the smell they could feel their ki enliven and purify. They started to gasp and Goku said, Wow, this stuff is quite good for training. Gohan chimed in as well. Yeah, I feel that it's even better than training in the time chamber. Vegeta looked at the stick of incense and was practically salivating inwardly. Raditz and Nappa weren't as interested as they became lazier with time. The human Z fighters liked that they found a way to grow stronger again. It seemed most of them reached a wall, the same could be said about Goku and Vegeta. They couldn't grow any stronger, Gohan Raditz and Nappa were the only ones who could grow stronger with conventional means. Raditz and Nappa because they didn't take their training seriously, and Gohan because he didn't hit the peak of his potential yet. I left them to their training and decided to live as a normal human while training from time to time till another crisis came. But there was no chance of anything else happening after I fully mastered my supreme Bodhisattva mode I was 100% sure I could beat Beerus. Peacefully sleeping on his planet, Beerus sneezed. Unknown to me, he also had some things under his sleeve. Frozen in time and space divided, 
but he has with the universe survived duck dodgers of the 24th and one half century protecting the powerless and the weak duck dodgers he's fighting tyranny in the 24th and one half century. These lyrics could be heard on Duck Dodger's ship as the pig cadet fumbled his hands on the controller of the ship. Dodger's now way buffer and taller than before came behind him and nodded at him saying, This song is good. This will be my theme song from now on. Be sure to play it every time we save a planet. Dodger's had saved quite a few planets since he started his space journey. And he loved the feeling of being adored by others. He also did his job and spread my teachings. My face appeared on the giant monitor of the ship and asked, How's the situation, Dodgers? Dodgers saluted me and started to debrief. I nodded at his information things were going very well for Universe 7. The average level of the universe was getting higher and higher these days. It would be very helpful as I wasn't sure if I could participate in the Universal Tournament anymore due to my god status. While Beerus Wiss and the Supreme Kais recognized me as a god, I haven't got any notifications from Zeno or the Grand Priest. I was laid in a hammock in the backyard of my house as I communicated with Dodgers using a special device created by Capsule Corporation for Universal Communication. After Dodgers finished his debrief, I gave him some encouraging words combined with some advice on how to get stronger and close the communication channel. I had to check on my other disciples as well, Felix was doing well himself, he started to buff up as he took on the Viking path, he wasn't the scrawny young man from before, he now had a Viking's physique and took a liking to fight with tomahawks and axes. I wasn't proficient in these weapons so I just gave him some advice on normal hand-to-hand -hand combat and asked for his debriefing as well. Rhymestyle was doing well with his instructor job. He even started a YouTube channel where he showed his collection of characters on a mobile game. It seemed most of his pay was going there. As for the others, they gradually grew stronger every day. Vegeta Goku and the other Z fighters with the help of the incense from the Buddha Kingdom were slowly but surely starting to break through the wall that was blocking their advance. My power was also increasing every day as my body was adapting and evolving according to the sacred key. My mind was getting clearer and clearer every day. My psychic bottleneck disappeared as my mind power started to increase again. I also found a few more talented individuals at my dojos. One was a purple little dog who seemingly wanted to protect the grandmother who took care of him since he was little. He called himself Courage, and he was a pretty cowardly individual, but he did his best in training himself. A noble goal for a little guy like himself. Some other strong individuals would be a trio of animals, a little brown mouse, a cat with a bluish coat, and a gray bulldog. They weren't humanoid just like Courage, but they could talk and think like humans. The cat and mouse had a rivalry while the dog was just there to train. Then he got entangled with the duo and they became a trio. I gave all of them instructor positions, but they choose to decline. Courage had to protect his grandma, while the trio was uninterested in money. They just came to the dojo to get stronger, plain and simple, nothing else needed. There weren't many talented people that got a power level over 15,000. But these four almost reached 20,000. Most of the people that trained at my dojos reached a power level of 1,000 or so. The average of the planet also increased to half that. The environment started to change as the trees became stronger and some even gained sentience. The animals just like those before reached human levels of intelligence, however, they were a minority. Wiss was observing the happenings on the planet with his key sense as he smiled at Bulma and ate some dessert. He was impressed with the way the planet evolved, he said to himself. Hum Krillin did a good job on Earth. Even though it isn't in his jurisdiction to strengthen a planet and the universe, he is supposed to balance things out. But I'll let this one slide just because the food is so goddamn good here. He started to giggle to himself as he stuffed his face with strawberry ice cream. Beerus was sleeping in his bed. He was snoring so hard his whole realm was shaking when he suddenly started shouting, Super Scion God, I was just don't flick my forehead. Then he just started to sleep like a rock again. There wasn't much time left before he woke up again though. After the feast on Earth where he ate till he almost burst he got back to his realm to take a few years nap. He sneezed and a ball of destruction obliterated a nearby wall. Unfortunately, Wiss wasn't currently on the planet to stop the needless destruction. The oracle fish immediately came scampering forward in his bowl sweat dropping at the hole in Beerus' bedchamber. 
he started to swear under his breath and left. The ball of destruction almost hit him after it went through the wall. Back on Earth, Lazuli Jaika and I were doing some extra special activities while the children were away playing at Capsule Corporation. Trunks was sparring with Goten as Marin and Ryu watched. They both transformed into Super Scions and clashed in mid-air shockwaves appearing around them when suddenly Trunks missed his punch and plowed down to the earth. Ryu giggled at Trunks' mistake, but Trunks got up from the ground and shouted, Stop doing that, Ryu. It's not fun when you stop time and make me miss my attack. Ryu just continued laughing while Marin put a hand to her mouth to stop her giggling. Goten scratched his head and reverted from his Super Scion transformation. Afterward, he said, It's okay, Trunks, we sparred enough, let's eat something. Trunks' grandmother's eyes started to glow red as she heard the mention of food. She quickly appeared out of nowhere with a tray of food cookies and juice. It was unknown how this woman was able to hear so well when mentions of food were made. Goku and Vegeta were sparring on the lookout both in their base forms. They smirked at each other as they met in midair. Controlled shockwaves spread around as the other Z fighters did the same thing. Piccolo was meditating nearby. Popo was behind the lookout backhanding a blue-haired chick who wore skimpy clothing. Bitch this is too little. Go get some more Big Daddy Popo isn't protecting at such cheap prices. Understand? She got up from the ground and cleaned her face. The red palm mark disappearing directly as she bowed towards Popo and said in a loud tone. But not loud enough for the others to hear. Yes, Big Daddy Popo. Popo nodded at her then slapped her butt and threw her off the lookout. The blue-haired woman started to fly towards a nearby the city to find work. Bulma was doing work on her computer, while Cell was training in a nearby gravity room. Majin Bu was eating at Hercule's home, Videl was stir-frying rice while her mother was cooking sausages and Hercule was chatting with Bu at his request. The dog which Hercule saved was under the table wagging his tail and barking. On Namek, things were peaceful. A little too peaceful in the elder's residence, two red glowing eyes could be seen before they closed themselves. No one was sure what happened on Namek after Dend left. This would be a story that won't be told. Musarka was sighing a baby was in her rocking arms as he tried to quiet it. She started to sing a lullaby when a man came behind her and took the baby from her arms and said, Darling, go and relax. I will take care of Martok Jr. For now, you did enough. It was the prince which she married, Martok Sr. of the Garbkop Kingdom. She smiled towards Martok and started to walk towards the Imperial Chambers to take a rest. Martok started to rock his kid like Sarka did he even started to sing him a lullaby. It seemed he was a great father and Sarka didn't marry him unwillingly. Back on Earth, Rashi was having the time of his life with a redhead woman in his bedroom. He was in his buff form and did his business at fast speeds that shouldn't be possible at his old age. Being the former master of such a strong and rich disciple had its benefits. This was the fifth woman Rashi courted this week. Poir and Oolong were drinking tea at a tea shop in South City, and they sighed at each other. Poir continued Oolong's thoughts. Yeah, that's right, I miss Yamcha. All he does nowadays is train. After he got beaten by Majin Bu that day, he never stopped training. Life was going well for the Earthlings, but how were things going in large in the whole universe? After the Cold's Empire demise, countless races which were bullied or exterminated had their survivors come to claim hold of their ransacked planets. With the help of the former Planet Trade Organization employees, they got their planets back and started to repopulate. During the repopulation, the grunts that took their planets from them helped them to reconstruct and revitalize their races. After those works were done, they joined the Galactic Patrol to become officers or even captains based on their power. The criminal rating of the universe started to lower more and more as everyone started to enjoy life. Even though poverty and discrimination still existed in the universe, things were going in the right direction. Unfortunately, no godly intervention would stop these two things from popping up. The Cold Empire individuals all responded to my commands via the proxy of Birder and Jaika. Their workloads decreased with time as the Planet Trade Organization members finally all changed their profession. From time to time, Jis would come to visit and play with his nephew. He didn't like the name I gave him, 
saying that it should have been something more space Australian, but I decided not to comment on it. Time was going by very quickly, day to day, month to month, year to year. It's been approximately three to four years since Majin Buu was defeated and converted to good. In his realm, Beerus was yawning and scratched his head as he looked at Wiss who was before his bed and was smiling at him. Beerus got up from the bed and told Wiss in a sleepy voice, Wiss let's get to Earth. There is one more guy I had a dream about this time. Wiss looked at Beerus with curious eyes and said, Besides Krillin, there's someone else you would dream of, Lord Beerus? Beerus nodded and said to Wiss in sleepy tone, Yeah. I think it was a super god something? Super scion something, oh yes, yeah, super scion god. Wiss bumped his staff on the ground as images projected above it. Does the scion god resemble one of those in the images? The images showed Raditz, Nappa, Goku, and Vegeta. Beerus' eyes widened as he took a good look at all of them, and he muttered, No, actually, none of them resemble the one I saw. Wiss nodded his head and the projection changed again. Now it showed Gohan and Beerus nodded with a thoughtful look in his eyes. The projection was of Gohan and Videl. Videl was massaging her stomach and smiling towards Gohan. Gohan didn't wear glasses as he did in the original Super. He was also buffer and had a serious aura. He was way stronger than before, and he was starting to catch up and even go beyond Goku's and Vegeta's power levels, unknown to them. I took him secretly to visit Elder Kai so he could get his potential unlocked. Beerus's gaze turned sharp as he observed Gohan more clearly and his sleepiness wore off. He flew over to the hot spring of the planet, took a quick bath, and wore his God of Destruction clothes as he intoned to Wiss. First we get to Earth, eat something then after that, we have to see about this new Super Scion God. Also let's check on the new Buddha guy. With staff clashed against the ground as a multicolored barrier of key encased both of them as they started to travel towards Earth. Things were peaceful for such a long time, but they would start to get more interesting from now on. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.